Hi, I'm New Mexico Lieutenant Governor Diane Dennish. Happy holidays and welcome to the New Mexico Bowl. I hope you're going to enjoy it with some spicy green chili, New Mexico style. Come on, pay us a visit. Meanwhile, sit back, relax, and enjoy the game and the green chili. This telecast available on ESPN HD presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. And welcome back. The New Mexico Bowl just set to kick off as we welcome the third member of our crew on the sidelines, Dave Ryan. All right, Dave, thanks a lot. Yesterday here in Albuquerque, both teams attended a pre-bowl luncheon at a local hotel and casino. Who was the featured speaker? None other than our very own Lee Corso from ESPN College Football Game Day. Lee had him going for half an hour, rousing speech, sometimes got emotional. Sometimes he was hilarious talking about his days playing at Florida State with Burt Reynolds, coaching at Louisville and coaching at Indiana. Afterwards, we asked him for a pre-game breakdown and also maybe a prediction. After all, Lee, the helmets are right nearby. When I analyze this game, I analyze like a fight fan. You know, they fight then, see, styles make fights. You got Nevada can score like crazy. And then you got New Mexico, the good defensive team, strong there. Nevada, in fact, I like this one stat about them. 23 times they've had run plays of over 25 yards. Only one football team, Oklahoma, has more, and they had 25. New Mexico is ranked 23rd in the nation on defense. Different styles should be a good, tough game going into the fourth quarter, and a field goal wins it by. <laughs> So there was no prediction there from Lee Corso. He said when he motivates each team, talking to him like he did yesterday at a luncheon before a bowl game, he won't make that true prediction. But watch him for the BCS National Championship game from New Orleans and, of course, the Rose Bowl and college football game day. He'll have the calls coming up for you here on ESPN. All right, New Mexico has won the toss and elected to receive. And Brett Jekyll, a junior from Las Vegas, has it teed up. Marcus Smith awaits the opening kick of the New Mexico Bowl and it will come down inside the five to Smith from the two. Terrific wide receiver returns this one up the middle and almost reaches the 30 yard line return of 26 yards. And now today's starting lineup presented by Samsung Mobile and for the Lobos a proud alum co-owner of the Sacramento Kings Joe Maloof does the honors. Well, Vince Natale and Devin Clark lead the offensive line group, better known as the Hitman. There's also plenty of playmakers in the offense, with Travis Brown and Marcus Smith forming one of the nation's best receiving duels. So the Lobos minus Rodney Ferguson, two-time first-team all Mountain West running back with Paul Baker Jr. from Arlington, Texas, trying to fill a major set of shoes. Ferguson almost 1,200 yards on the ground this year, and Baker has uh, right now 300, averaging 3.4 per carry. Well, big difference. You're talking about replacing a 230 pound back with a 190 pounder. And the first pass. For Donovan Portery is complete. Very short yardage. Travis Brown. And let's look at the Nevada defense. As uh, brought to you by Samsung Mogul. Former Wolfpack great now Seahawks wide receiver Nate Burleson. Anchoring the D-line is the dump truck. Nose guard Matt Hines, who is the strongest player on the team. Senior linebacker Ezra Butler will be playing on Sundays next year. And junior Jerome Johnson is the hardest hitter on the team. Cornerbacks Devon Walker and Paul Pratt are the key guys in the secondary. Go Pack. And the Lobos with a third down and six. Portery well protected, complete over the middle. Marcus Smith will not be caught. Third play of the game, touchdown Lobos. 66 yards. Longest play of the season for Smith, senior from San Diego, and the top receiver in the Mountain West Conference this year. And Donovan Portery did a great job of being patient in the pocket and waiting for Smith to clear the zone. And once he cleared the zone, he put the ball in the perfect spot for him. It's a great job in the pocket by Donovan Portery. Fourth touchdown catch of the year. First team all Mountain West selection and a very typical Marcus Smith 
catch and run. Most of the damage he does this year after the catch. All America place kicker John Sullivan adds the extra point just like that. Uh, Portery had plenty of time in the pocket. Take a look here at the pressure or lack thereof and watch him hold up. He's looking all the way at Smith. He waits for him to clear and then finds him. Smith on the left coming across. There he is. He clears the linebackers waiting for the ball and then off to the races. And Dave Baldwin, the offensive coordinator, said he had to get Smith involved early in the ball game. He's one of those receivers that if you get it to him early, he plays great the rest of the ball game. Third play from scrimmage. 66 yard touchdown. The only Wolfpack defender who had a chance at him was the free safety Justin Jackson about 20 yards downfield. Not much of a chance as it turned out. Hey, you know we we're talking about Rodney Ferguson being out and what impact that has on the offense. What do you do. Well you give the ball to Smith. You, know, you, you get seven points off a big play like that. You don't miss your running back when the game starts. So in less than a minute and a half the Wolfpack already trailing seven to nothing. And Jordan Scott has it teed up for New Mexico eight and four tied for third of the Mountain West five and three this year against six and six Nevada a bowl team only after their season closing victory over Louisiana Tech. They also had to have Hawaii enter as a BCS entrant into the Sugar Bowl for Nevada to make the postseason. And the return by Alex Rosenblum, a very short one, only to the 25-yard line. So the Wolfpack offense now presented by Samsung Mobile. Let's hear again from Nate Burleson. Leading coach Alt's pistol offense is fab freshman quarterback Colin Kaepernick. Joining him in the pistol is all-wag running back Luke Lippincott. And the playmaker in the receiving core is junior wide receiver Marco Mitchell. Up front is the Union. And the two guys who help anchor this line is guards Charles Manu and Greg Hall. All right, from the 25 yard line, the Wolfpack in this pistol. Here, variation off the shotgun, rolling, throwing on the run, Kaepernick, and he actually hits. A Lobo defender, Blake Legon, the left safety. Now, the Lobo defense presented by Samsung Mobile. Again, Kings owner, Joe Malou. Don't be fooled by their size. The swarming Lobo defense is fast, aggressive, and they love to hit. Tyler Donaldson and Michael Tui are two of the most active defensive ends you'll see. There's not many smarter than linebacker Cody Case. And safety O.J. Swift is a stick of dynamite. Number seven offense in the country, 489 yards per game. First carry, good for nine yards for Luke Lippincott, the junior from Salinas, California, brought down by Tyler Donaldson. And the Lobo defense, Rod, first of all, has to figure out where Lippincott is coming from. Well, you know, we talked about that in the open. Take a look at him now. He's lined up behind the quarterback in that I formation, and the quarterback is up high, you know, in that shotgun formation. Normally, a quarterback under center, you can see the tailback. But for the linebackers, when they can't see the tailback, it's hard to read and tell where he's moving right off the bat, and it puts you a half step behind the play. So a very balanced offense. 226 yards running, 263 passing per game, and they run on third down and two, and Lippincott is stopped a yard shot. As Ian Clark, their leading tackler from that Lobo linebacker safety slash position comes up and he has his 79th tackle of the year and the Wolfpack will have to punt it away on fourth and one. Zachary White a senior from Reedley California averaging 38 yards per kick not much wind and it comes down inside the 20 yard line. O.J. Swift with a very short return of a 47 yard punt just underway in the second New Mexico Bowl here in Albuquerque seven to nothing Lobos. And we echo that Merry Christmas Happy New Year from the New Mexico Bowl already led by the Lobos seven to nothing the X Factor presented by TD Ameritrade. 
You know, you talk about Ferguson being out of this ball game. Who are we thinking about? Who would step up and make a difference? Marcus Smith is showing you that for New Mexico. And for Nevada, Marco Mitchell, he's a guy that's going to have to get something done for that offense if uh, New Mexico is success successful in holding the pistol down. Mitchell, who averages an incredible 22 yards per catch. Portery with flags and whistles thrown in the area of Smith. Five-yard penalty, first down. Greg Burks, referee of this Big 12 officiating crew. If you think about Ferguson being out, he's a guy almost 300 carries this season for New Mexico, and it's probably unfair to ask Baker, who's only had you know less than 100, you know, to be the guy and to pick up all the slack. So somebody else was going to have to step up for New Mexico. So first and 15 with Portery under center. And Paul Baker slides through <laughs> out to the 21 yard line. Back to the touchdown. Third play from scrimmage. Yeah, now watch Mitchell right here. Uh, Marcus Smith. Marcus Smith gets into his position from that motion. Now look at the linebackers. They are here and here. They don't pick him up. There's a lot of room. They pass him off. He finds a soft spot. Portery waits for him to clear it. And then he has a sprint to the end zone. Only Justin Jackson had a shot at the end and he couldn't get a hold of it. Two wide receivers who could play for any program in America. Their offensive coordinator, Dave Baldwin, making that point earlier in the week. Portery again with all day and heaves toward a double covered Travis Brown, who draws a flag. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uche Anyanwu, the strong safety, making the contact. You know, I'm, I'm not sure that ball was catchable. And it also looked to me like Brown gave up on the route. And then after the ball was thrown, he decided to go again and ran into the DBs. Holding number 17 of the defense. That's a 10 yard penalty and an automatic first down. He was uh, never going to split those two DBs. No, 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 no. That, that ball was so far overthrown, and he had given up on the route. He was trying to split them, and there was no way. I, I, I don't throw that flag. That, that ball is not possible to be caught. Anyan Yu draws the flag. Jonathan Amaya also in the double coverage of Brown, but it turns into a New Mexico first and 10 from their 31. And Brown splitting out wide out of the I formation. Matt Portland, the fullback, gets his first carry. And just his third all season. First two went 38 yards. He's caught eight passes, mostly used like a pull and guard as a blocking fullback. He, he can catch the ball out of the backfield, too. He's, he's pretty good at that. But I, I am really, really curious about Baker, how much he carries the ball today. How many touches will Steve Baldwin, the offensive coordinator, you know, give him? Josh Fussell replaced by Quillen after that carry. Good for two. And out of the offset eye, play action. Portery okay. with a strike and across midfield is Travis Brown down to the 45 of Nevada. It's a 22 yard strike from Portery to Brown. Well, they're using their receivers to pick up the slack. Crossing routes. Portery, plenty of time. Crossing route again over to Brown, who comes from the right side of the formation to the left, beats the man coverage, picks up a first down. Portery, a sophomore from Port Arthur, Texas. Memorial High School, where he teamed in the backfield with Jamal Charles, now with the Texas Longhorns, Big 12's leading rusher this year. Is uh, Charles going to stick around or head to the NFL? That's a question. Texas fans are wondering about after the Holiday Bowl. First down Lobos already up seven to nothing. Looking right throwing left and over Brown and incomplete. Let's check into the studio and welcome Reese Davis. All right Dave earlier today our first bowl game of the day Papa John's dot com bowl Southern Mississippi and Cincinnati and Ben Mock had just a spectacular day finishing his career going 30 of 52 334 yards he threw four touchdown passes that one to Antoine Giddens 31 21 and Jeff Bowers finale is head coach of the Golden Eagles and a tough way for Jeff to go out after uh, putting that program year in year out in a position to make a mark in the postseason. Rolling and running out of room was Portery. 
Yeah, but what a way for, for Malk to go out. A young man who started out his career at Wake Forest and had that horrible injury. He tore up his shoulder, broke it, screws, and one of the worst oh. throwing arm injuries medical people in football have ever seen. Yeah, and he managed to, to get it together and get over to Cincinnati and ran that spread attack there, and they had a great year with him. It's good to see that happen for him. Third and 10, New Mexico. Still from the Wolfpack 45. Not yet five minutes into the New Mexico Bowl. Lobo scored on their third play, 66 yards, Donovan Portery to Marcus Smith. And this time he throws high and behind Travis Brown. And he had him out there. I mean, he had Brown open coming towards the middle. Ezra Butler was in on the play, but. Porter Reed just kind of misfired here. I mean, he's trying to be patient, and he's waiting for Brown to clear, and he clears the linebackers, but he throws it behind him. Now, he probably was concerned about the linebacker who was directly in front of Brown and didn't want to throw the ball towards him. So Jordan Scott will punt for the first time. Thompson the Mountain West in net punting in 12th nationally. 38 net yards. This is one of his specialties, making sure that the Wolfpack will start as close to their end as possible, and it's dead at the 10-yard line, 35 unreturnable. Timeout, 9.52 in the first quarter, 7 to nothing, New Mexico in the New Mexico Bowl. ESPN College Football, the New Mexico Bowl, is brought to you by the New Mexico Tourism Department, the best place in the universe at NewMexico.org. Pontiac, vote now for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year at ESPN.com, keyword Pontiac. And PlayStation 3, get ready to play beyond. Look at the making of New Mexican food, a fusion of Native American, Mexican, and Spanish ingredients and techniques. The New Mexico State fruit, quickly, get five seconds. New Mexico State fruit. Uh, Here's probably your cheat sheet. Chili pepper. The chili maybe? pepper. Right. Hey, did you have some the other day? I did. <laughs> red, <laughs> red or green? That's the big question here. Everybody asks. I tried the uh, the spicy pistachio mix. Unbelievably spicy. Yeah. I can only handle one of those. The Wolfpack pinned at their own 10 yard line and they run lip and cut off tackle for about three. Now, when you talk about the pistol, the idea as uh, foisted in Chris Alt's mind was how to best hide the running back behind the quarterback. In this case, Lippincott behind Capper. Yeah, you know, he spent uh, several years out of the game as, as the athletic director, kind of watching teams, and he watched the shotgun, he watched the spread, and he was thinking, how, how can I hide the guy, and how can I run some misdirection plays? I, I want a better running game than you get out of the shotgun. And this was his idea. So on second down and seven, all three wideouts to the right side as Kaepernick audibilizes. Red shirt freshman quarterback, Turlock, California. Fires complete, and Marco Mitchell brings it in at the 30-yard line, good for 16. A nice catch. Uh, well, let's go back to this pistol offense. You remember the single back. That's the quarterback under center with the back five yards behind him. Dennis Erickson made that famous. The shotgun is central to really the spread option. Rich Rodriguez did that. Here's the pistol. Quarterback four yards, so he's closer to the line of scrimmage. And the tailback uh, lined up directly behind him, seven yards, hiding from the linebackers, so it's harder for them to tell which direction he's moving in. It's worked for them, as you see all the rushing they've done. Excellent passing offense, but even better running, 11 in the country, seventh overall. Lippincott, however, yet to break out for more than two or three yards per crack so far. Yeah, and what happens as a linebacker when you look at that tailback, in this case Lippincott, who's behind a six foot six inch quarterback, you're trying to read flow. Which direction does he start? And if he takes a false step and you can't see him, you know, and now he takes a false step and you just get that, you're a half step behind the play. And that allows a lineman to get into you perhaps and block you keep you from making a play. So far, four carries, 15 yards for Lippincott. And see, now he's not lined up. This is more of your of your spread option your, uh, that everyone else runs. He's to the side, not behind the quarterback. Paul start. 75 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. And they get the guard, Charles Manu. 
senior from Reno, making his 34th consecutive start today. Well, they threw him a curveball. I mean, you know, we talk pistol. They run the pistol. They come out in the spread. Chris Alt always gives you something to react off of. In his fourth year of his third separate stint as the head coach at his alma mater. And, and this offense, I, I think it's it's the next thing. It's, it's popular with high schools. A lot of colleges are picking up bits and pieces of it now. But he runs it, you know, 95% of the time. Here it is again. Here it is in that formation. And the same thing. Whistles and movement prior to the snap. This time, right side offensive line. False start, right side of the line. Five-yard penalty, second down. And let's check in with Dave Ryan. So, Dave, this pistol started four years ago, as Chris all told us this week. The running game, he said, was completely miserable in Reno. So he started thinking about it. Could the quarterback go four yards back, get the snap? Not a shotgun, but the pistol instead. All of his assistant coaches, when he brought it up the following spring, said, forget about it, Coach Alt. We don't want to do it. All spring long, the quarterback was under center. The center was snapping towels to get the QBs used to it. And eventually, it really stuck. Who's already a Hall of Fame coach before the birth of the pistol. And after the fake to Lippincott, Kaepernick keeping, but only back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, I spent a lot of time talking to Jose Lewis, who's a defensive coordinator for New Mexico, and, and a really good one, a guy who's been on a lot of lists as a potential head coach. And he said he wanted to take away the pistol's running ability. He wanted to make sure that Colin Kaepernick wasn't able to run that play we just saw. And there's Rocky Long, the head coach who created this crazy defense several years ago at Oregon State. But they want to make Colin Kaepernick a pocket quarterback. They want to make him throw the football. He needs 19 yards on third down here. And up against the play clock, barely in time. Plenty of time to zip it in traffic over the middle and incomplete. Oh. Mike McCoy is attended target. <laughs> he didn't need to throw that ball. I mean, that's a freshman mistake there. Here you'll see it. Look at what he sees. He's got three red shirts in the middle, and he tries to squeeze his ball inside those three. Count them four red shirts. You can't do that. Too much confidence. He's had reason to think that just about everything he tries is going to work because it has this year. But the fourth and 19 punt by Zachary White had returned by O.J. Swift out to the 46-yard line. Another, another 47-yard punt, a 13-yard return. 6-15 in the first quarter, 7 to nothing. Lobos. One Bowl Week featuring over 20 bowl games in 12 days on the ESPN family of networks continues tonight as the UCLA Bruins take on the BYU Cougars in the Pioneer Las Vegas Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN tonight, 8 Eastern, following our game here in Albuquerque. What's uh, UCLA minus Carl Durrell? Yeah. Relieved of his duties after the season-ending loss to USC. Yeah, what, what is UCLA going to do about the head coaching position? That's a big question. Well, Mike Bellotti has said thanks but no thanks, staying at Oregon. From the 46, New Mexico on first down, leading 7 to nothing. Paul Baker, who is filling the starting running back role vacated when Rodney Ferguson did not make his grades. Ferguson, two-time first-team All-Mountain West, two-time thousand-yard rusher, and a completely different back than Baker. Ferguson, six foot two, twenty-nine. Baker, five seven, one ninety-five. Well, it tells you that you can't pound Baker inside all game. You know, you've got to make explosive plays. Get him outside. Get him in some space. So far, three carries, seven yards. One there, Portery. Throwing complete to Roland Bruno right down the line, and he coughs it up at the 45-yard line, recovered by Nevada. Devon Walker barely inbounds as Uche Anyanwu is there 
on the fumble by Roland Bruno. Let's see if he be able to recover that ball in bounds or did it get to the sideline. Can't see from that angle, but watch it here. Is he in bounds when he recovers this? Ball just gets poked out. Yep, clearly in bounds. No feet on the sideline there. That's a nice recovery by Anyan Wayo. And Joshua Maga actually caused the fumble. Injured for the last five weeks of the regular season and a question mark after a sprained knee as to whether he'd be available today. So huge break for Nevada but on their first and 10 run from the New Mexico 46 yard line. Brandon Frager searches in vain for the right corner. Yeah, well, not a lot going there. You can count on one thing. On first down, New Mexico is taking away the running game. They are daring Nevada to throw the ball on first down. They're giving them five, six, seven-man look up front, daring them to throw. Frager in his first carry. In for Lippincott, loses four. Officially three now on second down and 13 from midfield. the long count Kaepernick heaving deep too deep for Mike McCoy who was running free too he had beaten Glover Quinn a good five yards you know we talked about uh, where's Waldo Ian Clark you know being the key guy to the defense he plays that third safety spot you always have to find him right because you think he's going to be in pass coverage well he might be blitzing or something and last time he came off the edge at Finding him is not an easy thing to do. They hide him, disguise him very, very well. Combination safety linebacker position made famous by Brian Erlacher before he moved on to the Bears. So third and long from the 50. And Kaepernick throwing complete to Mitchell, but a yard or so shy of the first down is a pickup of 12. And it will bring up a fourth and two. Where's Ian Clark? There he is. He's coming off the corner. They found him, and they were able to get their back. Fragger on him, and Fragger does a good job of pushing him out of the way. So they identified where Clark was, and they had him accounted for the protection, which allowed them to get the pass off. And on fourth and two from the 38, Wolfpack trailing 7 0. We'll go for it from a spot on the field where. You really almost always and it should go for. And with everybody in tight, Kaepernick blasted. But before that, flags and whistles as Kevin Balligan, junior defensive end from Odessa, Texas, got to Kaepernick almost untouched. Delay of game. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. So now a completely different situation on fourth down and seven. Yeah, well, you know, he took a step. I think like uh, like he knew the flag had been thrown. He didn't even try to go forward yeah. on that play. Yeah, he'd already given up on it. Balligan had not. But on fourth and seven, they have no chance for really anything other than a whitehead punt pinning the Lobos somewhere inside their 20 yard line. And this one bounces just into the end zone. Almost pinned at the one. 43, they'll net only 23. And with 417 in the first quarter, still New Mexico 7 0. The granddaddy of them all, the way it was meant to be. Pac 10 versus Big Ten, the mighty Trojans of USC, the Fighting Illini of Illinois. From the Tournament of Roses Parade to the game's final play, all the tradition, pageantry, and excitement of the Rose Bowl game. Presented by City, New Year's Day on ABC. And Rod, you and I will have the ESPN radio broadcast. What do you think of the decision by the Rose Bowl folks not to opt for Georgia, which would match two higher ranked teams, the teams that most people feel were the hottest in college football at the end of the year. Well, I, I have no problem with it. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about that after this play. Lobos after the touchback from their 20, 4-17 in the first quarter. 
And the Wolfpack have not gotten to Portery all day. Second catch from Marcus Smith and good for 22 yards. His first one went 66 yards for a touchdown on the third play of the game. Well, here it is. You see him coming across the middle. Ball a little bit behind him, but he handles it okay. Nice tackle out there. So Marcus Smith for 22 yards, and the Wolfpack have not come close to Donovan Portery, who has badly outplayed the more celebrated Colin Kaepernick so far. And that time, Roland Bruno trying to turn the corner. When we think about the Rose Bowl, we always think about Big Ten Pac-10, and that's, yeah. you know, they opted for tradition, yeah. bringing Illinois, but there was an opportunity for a really intriguing matchup had they gone with Georgia. I, I understand that, but I, I think when you look at Georgia, you had a team didn't win their division, didn't win the conference, and you're looking at a team out of the Big Ten that was as exciting as any team in Illinois as we have this play going on right now. We'll get back to it. Second out at eight. And Paul Baker, terrific after the catch it inside the Nevada 35-yard line. 22 yards for Baker on just his seventh catch of the season. Not used that often in this room. So you've got a thrilled Illinois team heading west. Given the opportunity when Ohio State got into the national championship matchup. Yeah, They're well, not as highly rated as Georgia, but you know, tradition probably means more to the Rose Bowl than any other goal. Well, I got to tell you, though, I mean, when you're you're talking about this season and as wacky a season as we've had, why would you discount? Why would you discount Illinois against USC? I mean, we've seen upsets all season long, and you're talking about an Illinois team that knocked off Ohio State and a USC team that is great defensively, but maybe not as explosive offensively as a lot of people think. Well, there's absolutely every reason to think Illinois will make it a terrific game. And uh, people who have not maybe had a chance to see their quarterback, Juice Williams, We'll have a big dose of them New Year's afternoon. Here, first and 15 after the penalty against Devin Clark. Portery faking short and incomplete, throwing it a little bit deeper for Baker. Well-timed hit by the quarterback, Paul Pratt. And Pratt's a guy that uh, you figured they would go after because he's uh, the smaller corner. But take a look here. He comes up and he does deliver a blow and delivers it on to the running back, Baker, coming out of the backfield. And that made all the difference. But New Mexico is trying to get Baker in space to take advantage of his speed. Pratt, a senior from Woodland Hills, California, in his 28th start today. Could not have timed that hit any better. So second and 15 from the 39, and Puerto Rico's calls timeout. First call by either team with 228 in the first. Time out, New Mexico. Are you, uh, are you done with your, your Rose Bowl uh, uh, comments? I got one more for you about the Rose Bowl. By all means. Okay, one more for you. And that is picking Illinois to play in that game was as clear a message as you're going to get that the Rose Bowl and the Big Ten are committed to the bowl system and not to a playoff system. Totally agree. So for, for folks out there that were thinking, ah, Georgia playoffs, forget about it. Yep. Not anytime soon. So here's seven to nothing New Mexico, Rocky Long's team in its fifth bowl in the last six years. Eight and four in the regular year, five and three in the WAC, their fourth eight win season in the last 42 years. Big win on the road at Arizona, first time ever on the road against the Pac-10 team, and eight first-team all-conference selections. But this since 1961 that New Mexico fans have been waiting for a bowl victory. Yeah, and Rocky Long is yet to win a bowl game here as a coach. What, 0-4 or something like that? That bowl, the uh, late unlamented Aviation Bowl. Deep, open, over the middle again, Travis Brown. Touchdown, 39 yards. And the local whiteouts are dealing misery to Nevada. 
Estrada, Smith, and Brown each have gone deep for six. And Brown ran a beautiful route, and he split a couple of defensive backs. He had Amaya out there and Anyan Wayu, and he just faked them both right out of their shoes with a cut to the post. Whoa. The top two pass catchers in the Mountain West. Brown has his sixth touchdown of the year. First team all conference, one of that group of eight. In his case, for the second straight year. And John Sullivan, the All America, makes it 14 0. Donovan Portery, 7 of 11 for 172 yards and two touchdowns. 66 yards on the third play of the game to Marcus Smith and 39 yards here to Travis Brown. Well, a shell-shocked Nevada Wolfpack defense has given up two long touchdown passes. Near the first quarter, 14-0. And Chris Wellington returns to kick 22 yards. One more look, Portery to Travis Brown. Okay, I, I want to go back to this, and I want you to see the tip-off here for New Mexico and Portery, while they, how they know the middle is so wide open on this play. They're able to get down there and make something big happen. Right here, this cornerback tips that he's got man-to-man -man coverage inside, no safety help. Now the quarterback knows he's got the safety single in the middle. He goes to his receiver, Brown, who beats the safety, Anyan Wayu, because he's got the middle of the field where the safety's trying to play single coverage. Quartery and his wideouts making it look easy. Kaepernick, on the other hand, has struggled. And here they set up a screen for Brandon Frager. <laughs> Dave Ryan, Colin Kaepernick has not looked like the WAC freshman of the year so far. Not so far, Dave. I was in attendance working the sidelines for ESPN October 14th this year at Boise State when Colin Kaepernick made his first career start. 177 yards rushing, two touchdowns, pass for another, 243 yards and three scores. Guys, he's not the same. Delay of game penalty. He's misfired on a couple passes, but watching on the sideline, last possession for New Mexico, he looks upbeat, confident, relaxed, very talkative with teammates. I think they'll bring it back. Just three out of six for 32 yards with 2.07 to go in the first quarter. And Frager in his second straight series at running back for Luke Lippincott. He was right up the middle of the 38. Well, Kaepernick is normally very effective, but he struggled today. He's been in the pocket. They've been trying to make him a pocket passer, which is not his forte. I think he's at his best when he's on the move. He's got great feet. He loves to throw rolling to his right and rolling to his left. They haven't been able to do that today, and he hasn't been able to get outside on bootlegs and run the football. He's their second biggest running threat. 6.1 yards per carry as a quarterback. It's phenomenal. Here's a third and two. Lippin got back in the game, but only to block here. And a tough catch hauled in at midfield by Adam Bishop. First time Kaepernick connects with the tight end, and it's good for 13 and the first. And Clint Mapeak is all over him. Watch him come from the side over here. He's going to get out there. He's out there, and he manages to get him. Look at him shield the defensive back. McPeak completely forces everything there. That's a great job by a big tight end, just kind of fending off the defensive back. It's a little surprising, as you think, that they don't go to Adam Bishop more often. He averages 16 yards per catch. Half have been for touchdowns this year. Seven scores on 14 catches during the regular year. This with a flag, the carry by Brandon Frager near another first down. Frager getting a lot of first quarter action here for Luke Lippincott. Greg Burks, referee Offside, from the Big 12. Number 53 of the defense. That penalty is declined. Second down. Kendall Briscoe, defensive end. Offsides for the Wolfpack, or for the uh, Lobos. Now, I think you're right about the use of the tight end, particularly when you have a freshman quarterback who's struggling to get the ball down the field. You, you want to give him some easy throws, and a big tight end is an easy target. Bishop has the best touchdown perception, uh, percentage of any pass receiver in the country with four touchdowns or more 
this year. Kaepernick, who needed the 39-yard line on second down and one, got it. First down, Nevada. Right now, this pistol is misfiring. And they're, they're out of sync. They don't have the uh, the stretch play going. They don't have the the misdirection play going. They haven't been able to get the quarterback to the edge to run the football or throw the football. And uh, Chris Ald is searching for a way to get his freshman quarterback on track. Have they established anything? No, nothing. Well, we do have a first down in Lobo territory at the 39. And they go back to Frager, and this is what's happened when they have tried to run and get to the corner against this New Mexico defense. Ian Clark was there first. Brett Matson right there with him. Well, we talked about Ian Clark, but he gets a little help from Cody Case this time as well. But what did we say? First down. First down, New Mexico is loading up and daring Nevada to throw the football. And Nevada is continuing to try to establish the run on first down. And Cody Case says, no way. <laughs> You're not running the ball against me. Another loss of two. And they have run for 21 yards on 10 carries in this quarter. Which has run out. First quarter belongs to the Lobos of New Mexico. Two long touchdown catches. And a 14 to nothing lead in the New Mexico Bowl. Back in Albuquerque, quarter number two of the New Mexico Bowl. Dave Barnett, Rod Gilmore, and Dave Ryan. 14 nothing Lobos. And a second down and 12 for Nevada, trying to get anything established in this pistol offense. 66 total yards, all they managed in the first quarter. Colin Kaepernick as an open receiver, but having to go to the deck to make the catch that time is Mike McCoy, junior from Colfax, California. The, the, the interesting thing is that Kaepernick is getting time to throw the football, but New Mexico brings pressure from the outside to make sure he stays in the pocket. And, and he does, he's just not as comfortable. He's not you know, putting the ball in the right spot. And I think he's a guy. He just needs to run around and throw. I think he's just happier that way. He's got a third and four here. Five out of eight, 63 yards so far for Kaepernick, the whack freshman of the year. And on the quarterback draw, no one is fooled. George Carter, senior from here in Albuquerque, is all over Kaepernick on the quarterback draw. Yeah, I counted seven guys in the box, and then they just ran a run blitz with Carter taking the angle inside. Look at all the red shirts. They were playing for run on a third and four, figuring that this was two down territory for Nevada, that they'd run on fourth down if they didn't get it on third down. And sure enough, here they go. Going for it on fourth down and seven. And you, you like this. You say always do it down here. Even the best of punts have a tendency to go into the end zone and you net maybe 13 yards out of it. Kaepernick chased on a blitz, keeping and stretches for the marker. We'll see if he got it or not. He did not. I think they're going to mark him out of bounds a yard shy. Chased over there by Blake Lagon. You know, they didn't get it, but I like the play because it got your freshman quarterback outside and we talked about his feet, Dave, and how good he is, he managed to slip a tackle and almost picked up the first down. And this guy's six foot six. Made a nice move there. Watch this move. He's going against a defensive back. And he manages to get by Lagan and almost picks up that first down. It's great effort by Lagan. And holding on fourth down and seven, the low bow defense turns it back over to their offense. They have stricken. The Wolfpack defense with big plays twice to each wide receiver. This time underneath screen, Marcus Smith. He scored on a 66-yard catch and run on the third play from scrimmage. Well, these two guys have made everything happen so far. You got Smith who caught a little quick pass and took it deep. You have Brown crossing route and uh, another crossing route and then a post pattern for a touchdown. Two big-time receivers, both of them made first-team all-conference, and they both have touchdowns in the first half. 
One of the best tandems in the country. Not that many folks have seen this year. Paul Baker cuts it back up the middle and reaches midfield and beyond 16 yards. Jeremy Engstrom finally with the tackle. And those receivers help Baker get going. And look at what these guys have done on the season. And look at that, 86 and 69 catches, both of them around 1,000 yards. Brown's over now. Yeah, we got Brown over that now, too, so both of them over 1,000. That's, uh, that's big time. And they are stepping up today when their top running back is out of the ball game, Ferguson. Yeah, they have not missed Rodney Ferguson so far at all. They haven't run the ball nearly as often as they would have had he made his grades and been available. Porter has had all day to throw. This one is picked off. Justin Jackson returns it near the 30. Yeah, Porter, he never saw it. He never saw Justin Jackson. He was out on the right side in a shorter zone and kept drifting back. Now, it's going to happen on the left side of the screen. Porter, he rolls to his left, and he never sees 29 Jackson looking up as he comes back. There's Jackson right there underneath. And Portery never saw him. All he saw was his receiver coming across against the safety on Yon Wiley. That's definitely true, but a massive underthrow as well intended for Marcus Smith and well, five yards shy. Yeah, well, he, he figured Smith could come get it. He didn't see the guy over there. So the Wolfpack defense comes up with a takeaway and Luke Lippincott was one of the better running plays Nevada has managed so far out of the pistol. Uh, I think Nevada offensively, you know, their strongest formation is when they go trips. Three receivers to one side, tied into the other side. They get in that pistol formation and they either run it back to the tight end side or they go to their short passing game. Now right now you get a lot of two receivers to one side here with them and they're not in the pistol. Lippincott got six. Second down and four. Great fake. Kaepernick still with it. First down to the 48. Well, that is a freshman with senior level ball handling and a 13 yard keeper. And this is, I guess, not quite old school, but current because this is really just your spread option. This is the read option that everybody runs West Virginia, Texas, you name them. And that's a way to get your freshman quarterback on the edge and get him some confidence. Kaepernick's first three carries all went for minus yards. He was three for minus four. That one for 13 gets him to 15 yards on five carries. He's been a major weapon, not just throwing the ball. Lippincott again carries out the fake, and the pass is incomplete, short for McCoy. Now, that ball handling on that play, that was the pistol offense with the magic ball handling as good as you're going to see it. I mean, a nice fake to the right side. Nobody knew where the ball was. You got the receiver opposite. Look at this. Nice fake. Carries it out to the other side. Holds the linebackers. You got a receiver wide open. Puts the ball in a good spot, but you couldn't come up with that. It actually was a better looking pass than uh, it looked like on, uh, on first viewing. McCoy just let it bounce off his body first. Couldn't bring it in, but it was a strike. So second down at 10 now. Here's the good formation. Here's that trips with the tight end to the opposite side. Blitz by Carter picked up. And Kyle Sammons is close to a first down. Capital One Bowl Week featuring over 20 bowl games in 12 days on the ESPN family of networks continues Sunday night as the Boise State Broncos take on the East Carolina Pirates in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. 8 Eastern from Honolulu. And the number 24 rated Broncos, solid favorite there. Kind of odd to see that bowl game and not see Hawaii in that game hosting, but they've got bigger plans this year. Yep. Warriors, too good to stay home this year. This is third and inches. And uh, flags after Lippincott easily would have had the first. Prior to the snap, false start, number 98 of the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. Junior Poloka, back up tight end. Former walk on from Reno turns it from third and inches into third and six. And 
Chris Holt shakes his head. He has gotten very little consistent offense. Just now over 100 total yards. New Mexico. 203 total yards and we're still early in the second quarter. So now third down and six. And they come out of the pistol. Now they have the trips left. And Kaepernick hit as he delivers. It is a strike for a first down to the 30. Good for 16 yards to Salmons. It's got to come from the back side. You see the pressure coming, and he manages to get the pass off, even though Glover Quinn was putting pressure on him. Throws a nice ball. Flag on the play, though. Well, Salmon. Illegal formation. Only six men on the line on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Holy cow. First, tight end flinches on third and inches. They pick up the first down on third down and six, and that doesn't count. What did they line up? Well, they didn't have enough men on the line of scrimmage. As they, you see, they're okay here on this side, but on the back side, they didn't get their tight end apparently on the line of scrimmage or off the line of scrimmage. They were short. And now you see Chris Alt, he's, he's really frustrated. He's had everything go wrong he's here. He's going all the way through his playbook here yeah. for third down. And he's telling the official they line up correctly. He says, no, no, you got to get the guy in the right spot up there. I mean, the trip side of it was okay. So third and inches worked. Third and six works. How about third and 11? Now back in their own territory. Four-man rush picked up. Kaepernick time to heave it deep, too deep, as he again went for Kyle Sammons. And they'll have to punt it away on fourth down and 11. A promising series. Turns up nothing for the Wolfpack. And more frustration. DeAndre Wright, that's not really the corner you want to go after. He's he's pretty strong with it. First team, Mountain West Conference. Good cover guy. Zachary Whited has averaged 46 yards on his first three kicks. And this return by O.J. Swift up to the 28. 9-13 to go, first half of the New Mexico Bowl. University Stadium, and right across the street, the pit, where Steve Alford coaches the Lobo basketball team. We'll hear from him when we return to Albuquerque. Back in Albuquerque, Dave Barnett and Rod Gilmore, Dave Ryan. 14-0, Lobos, 9-13 in the second quarter. Scored on the third play, 66 yards, Donovan Portery to Marcus Smith, later 39 yards, Portery to Travis Brown. And they have not missed the 1,000-yard rusher, Rodney Ferguson, so far at all. The screen for Smith. And let's go down to Dave Ryan, who is with Lobo basketball coach Steve Alford. All right, Dave, in his first year. Steve, what's the fit been like? You moved from Iowa City, Iowa, the Big Ten, to out here in Mount West Country. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, if you've ever seen a game in the pit, uh, you can understand how special a place this is. And we got a lot going on. The, the guys are working extremely hard, and we're getting re ready to renovate the pit as soon as our season's over. And the facilities are getting upgraded um, unbelievably, so that's a very special place. Off to a good start, 10-2 record. Weaver State comes here tomorrow. Pick middle of the pack in the Mountain West Conference. How do you feel your team will do this year? Well, we're just excited knowing that uh, you take over a new program, you never know what to expect. And our guys have worked awfully hard, and having an opportunity to get 11 wins possibly before Christmas is pretty exciting. There are not a lot of teams that can do that. So we got three games left to get ready, 120 minutes to get ready for the Mountain West. And uh, we're looking forward to our first conference season out here. You're on the sideline watching a football game. How do you compare a basketball athlete to a football athlete? Well, I'd, I'd like to say we're a little bit smarter because we play inside, uh, especially when it's a little chilly like it is today. But, uh, you know, really proud of uh, it's been a very exciting football season. We got a chance to get nine wins here today. And Coach Long and his staff have done a tremendous job. And we had a great relationship here. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, whether you're following football or basketball or whatever sport it is here. Steve, thanks for the time. Happy I, holidays. I appreciate it. You too. Steve Alford, guys. Yeah, they play indoors and they don't run into each other. <laughs> Terrific job by Paul Baker, though, to pick up that first down. And another connection to Marcus Smith quickly out of bounds in Nevada territory at the 48. He, he did mention it's chilly here, and it, it is chilly, but it's much better than it was yesterday when we had a bunch of snow and the like, and 
I'm, I'm betting you didn't get any holiday shopping done yesterday. None. This would have been a completely different game if it had been played 24 hours ago. Yeah. Blowing snow, uh, much windier than today. And it's just crystal clear, 34 degrees, seven mile an hour breeze at kickoff. Couldn't ask for better conditions, really, this time of December in the Sandia Mountains. Again, Paul Baker up the middle, first down to the 42. And he is not Rodney Ferguson. He's 5'7", 195. Ferguson goes 229, 230. But Baker so far has uh, has probably done at least as expected, maybe more. Well, you say? It's because of the wide receivers. And because those two guys have been so effective outside, the middle is starting to open up a little bit, a little bit for, you know, quick bursts by Baker. Well, better than six yards per carry. Almost double what he did in the regular season backing up Ferguson. So another first down for the Lobos. And again, it's Baker. Close for a first. Dropped down by the corner, Paul Pratt. And he, and he wants to get to the outside. You get Baker in space, and he can do some things that uh, Ferguson can't. You see him bump this thing to the outside. Now he's one-on-one. -on -one and makes a nice move. He's, he's a good running back, but he's not a power guy. He's a speed guy. He makes you miss with his feet, not with power. Junior from Arlington, Texas. They had an inkling that Ferguson might not be academically available, so Baker got two great weeks of practice in for this game, coaches said. And uh, we're seeing the result of that. This is the fullback. Matt Quillen on the care. You, you take a, a look at Ferguson and what he brought to this offense. Again, a guy who had almost 300 carries for them, 98 yards a game, fourth in the conference, the 14 touchdowns, 120 all-purpose yards. And you take that out of the offense and you go, where, where are you going to pick up those 120 yards? Well, the receivers have gotten a lot of it. And then this guy, Baker, has stepped up with a seven-yard average this ball game. I don't think anybody could have expected anything like that. Here's a throwback. Portery couldn't find it as Josh Bussell threw it over his outside shoulder. Portery was looking for it over his inside shoulder. Great idea, not quite executed. Well, here is the trickeration. You have to get it. This is the handoff. Bussell throws it back, just quarterback out of the backfield. And the rule in the bowl season, you have to run your trick play before the other team. Because everybody works on your, their trick plays with the layoff before the bowl game. So why is that a rule? Why do you have to run yours first? Because the other guy, once you see it, everybody's alerted to it. If you don't run yours first, you, you know, you're not going to have the element of surprise. And that one could have gone for six. Instead, third and nine. And they blitz Portery, and they finally get to him. Ezra Butler, their bandit outside linebacker, their leading tackler. And the wax leader in tackles behind the line of scrimmage. And he's a guy that's going to play in the NFL. I mean, right now, the word is he's he's kind of like a third-round pick or so, maybe a little higher uh, if he does well in combines. Great speed, comes around the corner. Hard to believe that this is a guy who used to be 290 pounds and a nose guard. They turn him into a linebacker. So now to try from 53 yards out is John Sullivan, who kicks with a torn ACL, if you can believe that, in his plant foot. How do you do that? He leads the nation 26 to 29. Longest is 46. This would better that by seven yards. And it is good. I have never seen a kicker who is a better story than John Sullivan, the former walk-on, who went five years waiting for his chance. And he has taken this opportunity to become the best kicker in the country, and he nails a 53-yarder, 17-0. John Sullivan, senior from Tehachapi, California, is now 27 out of 30 for the year and about 10 out of 10 from 40 yards and beyond. And he just got his career best by seven yards, 53, 17, nothing. An amazing story. Yeah, and, and what he's done has just been incredible. And, and what the first consensus All-American here 
since Brian Erlocker? In 99. Yeah. Wow. All with a torn ACL. In his left plant foot. Jordan Scott, the putter, handles the kickoff duties. And this return from the seven yard line by Chris Wellington. Dave Ryan, John Sullivan literally is money, isn't he? I guess so, Dave. He had a tough start to his one and only season as a starting kicker here at New Mexico. He missed two field goals against UTEP. Before the next game against New Mexico State, his kicking coach Danny Gonzalez told him, John, you are money in the bank. Here is a lucky dollar. He tells us he puts that dollar in his shoe before each game, and there it is. And that day, he went three for three. He hasn't looked back since. He started a streak of hitting 24 of 25 field goals to become a first-team All-American. You can really hardly tell it's a dollar anymore, but he's never taken it out of his shoe. Not bad for a guy with a torn ACL and a bulky brace on his left knee, Dave. Uh, I don't think that dollar will ever return to circulation. So 17 nothing now, the hole for the Wolfpack to crawl out of. And they start with Lippincott up the middle. There's not been much room for him between the tackles today. So that's coaching. I mean, coaching is, I guess, more than just X's and O's. Motivation. Yeah. Here, here's a lucky dollar. Put in your shoe, and now you're good. He's perfect. <laughs> How good would he be with two good knees? Yeah, what, what if he had a $10 bill? He couldn't be any better. <laughs> Leads the nation, total field goals and percentage. Rehab four hours a day over the summer to get ready to play and he waited five years as a walk on to get his one season opportunity with the Lobos. Has he ever taken advantage of it? incomplete through the hands of Marco Mitchell. That doesn't happen too often. Well, you know, they've dropped about three balls today. I mean, the Nevada wide receivers are going to have to help out Kaepernick. I mean, he's put some balls on the money, and they've dropped them. And when you're struggling, as he has been at times at quarterback, you need guys around you to make plays, the plays that they should make, and occasionally a great play. But right now, they're just dropping too many passes. Kaepernick, the fifth highest rated quarterback in the country. 161 pass efficiency rating. Those of you to keep up with that number. And the Lobos have not allowed him to do anything he likes, including scramble. Still looking. Runs out of room with no target and is piled up on at the 23. Brett Madsen among the Lobos who get to Kaepernick. Well, they only rushed four that time, but there was no one open. Coverage was great downfield, and Kaepernick ran out of time. And once he ran out of time, he did what you would expect him to do. He you know, kind of panicked a little bit and got out of the pocket, and now he can't find anybody. So there's nothing for him to do except take some shots. Come on, freshman. You got to go down. You can't stand up there and take all those hits. This really is a stunning job by the New Mexico defense and the punt by Whited. Not a great one. Gets a little bit of a roll and down to the 47. Only a 33 yarder. So even the special teams not performing as expected for the Wolfpack. Everything working for the Lobos though. They lead 17 up. ESPN College Football, the New Mexico Bowl, is brought to you by Hyundai. Discover the power of thoughtful engineering at thinkaboutit.com. Duracell, trusted everywhere. And Corona. This holiday season, spread the good cheer with Corona and Corona Light. And as always, celebrate responsibly. Look at the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center, Indian dancing here in Albuquerque. Cultural Center offers information about visiting the Pueblos and a calendar of feast days and other events from each of the 19 area Pueblos dancing each weekend there at the Cultural Center. Lobos up 17 nothing. Time to add to it. They start great position their own 47. Paul Baker slides through a minimal sized hole on the left side still gets three yards out now, this is a critical time for Nevada you know the, the last four minutes of a half it's easy to lose your concentration and give up a play they can't do that here if they give up a play that's ball game yeah it's over I mean so last four minutes they have to have a defensive stand and their offense has to get something and if not they just can't give up anything bad they have got to concentrate these last four minutes five wide for Donovan Portery on second and seven Throw is complete to his tight end, 
Chris Mark up the sideline to the 30, good for 20 yards. Uh, and right now, Nevada defensively, they're in a world of hurt. Not a lot of pressure here, and you know why? They can't go single coverage against these receivers. So Portery has plenty of time. He has a number of receivers to pick out. He picks out his tight end mark. He could have gone anywhere else. You know, Pratt makes the tackle here, but he had choices. And they can't go after him because the impact of those two wide receivers. Mark the junior from Nevada, Las Vegas. So 20 yards, first down to the 30. And they again go Baker on the ground and met by Paul Pratt after the pickup of two. It's good to see Paul Pratt out there making some tackles. He, he was a guy that was a starter his first couple of seasons at Nevada and then tore up his ACL. Uh, before camp, I, I think it was back in 05, and missed that season, and then was a backup last year, and finally got back to being a starter this year. Gain of two. Four wide. Trips on the left side for Portery, who has been terrific. Incomplete this time, though, intended for Daryl Jones. We talked about Portery being terrific. How about you know, Dave Baldwin, the offensive coordinator, challenged him publicly after the season ended. As they prepared for this bowl game, he says, you know, Porter, he's got to get better. He, you know, he's got to have more of the offense down pat in order for us to be successful in the bowl game. And specifically, he was talking about focus. Mm -hmm. There were games where he didn't feel Donovan uh, had the concentration level that he needed. But he said a good start usually meant a good full four quarters for Porter and we've really seen that play out 11 of 17 212 yards and two touchdowns that one overthrown attended at the five for Marcus Smith and Smith was open that was a potential six instead it's fourth and seven and Nevada holds on that that play but they need to come out of this without giving up the three points and Mr. Automatic back out there again money huh 45 yarder this time you know Sullivan said that if he didn't have that brace on his left left leg he couldn't kick he couldn't plant because that ACL is gone he's got to get it fixed after the season amazing story just hit a 53 yarder his best of the year by seven this time from 45 obviously that's no problem <laughs> Oh, every kicker in America will now put a dollar in their shoe. 28 out of 31 now for the year for Sullivan. There's your coaching tip. You want to make your field goals? Put a buck in your shoe. That is another record for him. That's 10 games this year with multiple field goals. Paul Woodside of West Virginia, 1982, held that mark. He's now been tied by Sullivan. And for more, Dave Ryan. So how did John Sullivan tear up that left ACL, Dave? That's the question. This past April in spring ball, he was trying to catch speedy return man Marcus Smith on kick coverage toward the ACL on that plant leg. He tells us it was one of the worst days of his life. He was sure his career was over. He says his team doctors determined he did not need the reconstructive surgery. So the trainers here at UNM worked to strengthen the muscles around the knee. Two hours a day, Dave. You said earlier in the weight room working on that. By fall camp, he was ready. After that rough season opener against UTEP where he missed two, he's been mugged in the bank since well, I guess the lesson for kickers is don't worry about impressing your coaches with tackling it's not worth it <laughs> if you have to make a tackle you're probably not going to make it regardless of how hard you work on it but it has added to the amazing story of John Sullivan it's Rosenblum belted at the 18 after a short return of 14 yards. Reese Davis is in the studio. All right, Dave, coming up on the Flomax Halftime Report, we'll tell you how Jeff Bauer's swan song and farewell was spoiled. The Seminoles are shorthanded, and boy, are they ever shorthanded. And we'll tell you how Mighty Memphis got it done on the hardwood. You should have seen Lou Holtz react to Zombie Nation being played at the stadium there at the New Mexico Bowl. I wish I had seen that. <laughs> and what a story about Florida State. It's up to 36 players now. 
they will not have for their bowl game, mostly because of academic irregularities. Kaepernick throwing a strike on the run. And a first down catch by Marco Mitchell. Well, you know, we see that this time of the year, programs lose players as you get to bowl games. And you know, here's some of the significant ones. Florida State, their issues, Tennessee, Ohio State for the championship game. They've lost a couple of defensive backs. New Mexico lost one here. And part of it is guys who don't take care of their academic work during the season. You can slide by during the season, but those chickens come home to roost for the bowl game. You don't have enough credits and the like. You get caught at the end of the semester or the end of the, end of the quarter. Or in the case of Rodney Ferguson, the New Mexico running back, he did not make the grades he needed on his finals. Incomplete over the middle for Mike McCoy. You know, and, and we also occasionally find that the the extra time, you know, you have that time between the end of the season and the start of the bowl season where you might not have practice, you're less supervised, and some guys get in trouble and violate team rules during that period, and they get pulled out of bowl games. Uh, coaches have uh, a lot of time to game plan and scheme and try and come up with uh, the best show possible when the bowl game arrives, but there are lots of things they have to worry about in the meantime. And what's happened to Florida State, I don't think has ever occurred in the history of college football. Brandon Frager on the draw play, close for a first down, maybe a couple of feet shy. Well, in the Florida State situation with 36 guys who may not be able to play, you wonder, how do you practice? How do you get good no looks in practice? Forget about the game for a moment. How do you get prepared? You can't give all the looks and use the guys you need when you don't have enough guys in practice to show you those things. And it was an online music history course that caused all the trouble. The university president called it a tainted course. And so many of the Seminoles caught up in that web. Third down and one. They go to Lippincott. He should have the first. Well, they have time here. They pick up this first down here. They have plenty of time to get a score, and they desperately need a score before halftime. If for no other reason than to give their team the confidence that they can move the ball against this defense. But Kaepernick is just 7 of 14, 75 yards. Marco Mitchell, the leading receiver who averages 22 yards per catch, has three for 40. Three for 41. He's averaged less than 14 yards on these three catches here. They are without any form of big play. And that ball knocked away by Frankie Solomon, number 96, playing safety. He was given that number as a true freshman but a great Raiders, uh, the, the equipment people gave him a chance to change it he said no I like 96 now and that's what he is as a safety and a great disguise leading into this you see him knock the ball away and they were able to bring the pressure from the play, place where they wanted to throw the ball and that was Herbert Felder who was coming off that edge who had the pressure and now they struggle again on first down we'll pack as good a big play offense as there's been in the country, but today only five plays of more than 10 yards. Okay. Kaepernick for Mitchell, tight ropes to sideline and reaches the 34-yard line of New Mexico. Did you see that throw? Hey, that, that's big time. Best throw and catch Look they've had this. so far. This is an NFL throw. I mean, that ball, he's middle of the field, right on the sideline. That's a long throw, and that thing had a lot of stuff on it. Look at this thing. I mean, that, that's as good as it, as it gets. But how about the body control of Mitchell? I, I know, but I was just so taken aback by that throw. I mean, that was phenomenal. Nice catch on the sideline, but woof, that throw. And we get a big play. Only Oklahoma has had more plays of 25 or more yards this year than Nevada. And open deep was McCoy. Overthrown, though, at the goal line. Yeah, well, he didn't have as much time. Ian Clark, you know, where's Waldo? A guy, our low bowl safety, from the top of the field. And play after play, they keep bringing this field blitz. You see him coming this way right now. Ian Clark, once again, the Lobo, the current day Brian Erlocker, puts the pressure on him. That affects the timing on that throw. Their whole scheme is based on funneling the ball to him. He's their leading tackler. Yeah, and, and they use him in pressure. He, he is absolutely the key to that defense. 
So second down and 10. And a fumble recovered by New Mexico. George Carter has it at the 38. Brandon Frager coughed it up on the draw play, and Carter falls on it with 54 seconds in the half. Yeah, well, whose fault was it? Was it the freshman quarterback, Kaepernick, or was it the running back? It looks like Frager just didn't take it in. It looks like Kaepernick gives it to him perfectly, a little bit high, a little bit high on the pads. He's got to get the ball down lower into the stomach area. He gave it to him on the shoulder pads, and the ball will bounce off if a quarterback puts it that high. Yeah, Cody Case on the blitz may have caused just enough of a timing problem to force that fumble. And now back to work, Paul Baker takes the wheel for 21 more yards. Just a terrific first half showing by the backup forced into the starting tailback role here, Paul Baker. Well, there he is in the backfield. Take a look at this from the end zone. You see the screen play develop. They turn the defensive linemen loose. They get their linemen out in front. Look how far down those linemen are. You have Anthony Kilk, 75, way down the field, giving a block. From the 41. That ball bobbled and incomplete. Marcus Smith. Unable to bring it in. That's another big play waiting to happen, though. Now, yeah, well, New Mexico is a screen oriented offense. We've probably seen eight or nine of them today. But that is the, the foundation of their offense. When you play them, you have to find a way to stop their wide receiver screens, their tailback screens. If you don't do that, they're going to score on you. Well, they're almost at 300 total yards. There's Dave Baldwin, used to be the head coach at San Jose State. Offensive coordinator at Michigan State under John L. Smith, and he's coached some pretty good quarterbacks in his day. It's been 10 years under Jack Elway. Quartery over the middle to the 25-yard line. Travis Brown breaking the tackle. Still down at the 25 for 16 yards and another first with 24 seconds and a half. You know, this is a whole new mentality. This is as aggressive as I've seen Rocky Long in a bowl game. He hasn't won a bowl game until now. Well, he hasn't won this one yet, but he was 0-4. But his style has been much more aggressive today than ever before in a bowl game. Well, they have not won any bowl game since 1961. But a chance to go up at the half by 27 and the deep ball overthrown intended for Marcus Smith. <laughs> you think Rocky Long doesn't want to win his first bowl game? I mean, they're chucking the ball down the field, going after it, and here trying to get a touchdown before the end of the half. Just a corner route. He's got his guy open. He's got Smith there, but he just doesn't get it to him. Devon Walker was in the area, but wasn't exactly in great position on coverage. 249 yards, 13 of 22, two scores, one pick for Portery, just a sophomore. Yeah, you know, Rocky Long has taken a lot of heat in the media the last couple weeks around here about not having won a bowl game, and I think he's kind of tired of hearing that. Well, it would hard, be hard to imagine a better first half than this one. Portery throwing back against the grain, and it is caught at the two by Roland Bruno. 22 yards with seven seconds remaining in the half. And how, the time management is good here, but watch the end of the play, and then we'll get to the time management. Half roll, and does he catch the ball? Does he catch the ball? Yep. Yes. Hands underneath, great catch. But what I liked was after that, right away, they got the timeout call because they know it's a first down, and then the clock will run once they set the play. But they called the timeout because they knew they had the seven seconds, and now they have a shot at getting a touchdown. Good time, good clock management here. Yeah, and they still have one timeout remaining. In case they are not able to get out of bounds here. Seven seconds remaining, part of a terrific Capital One Bowl Week. Capital One Bowl Week. The time of year when day after day, night after night, those that have earned their way come to celebrate the rewards of a season well played. For the rest of us, watch and enjoy an American holiday tradition. That game coming up from Vegas. First and goal from the three. Portery rolling, throwing back at the end zone through Chris Mark, who was open for his fourth touchdown of the year. Bruins and Cougars follow this one. 
Three seconds remaining in this first half. And on second and goal from the three, they will go to John Sullivan. A little time there. It looked like they were about to call a timeout for this. I think they did. You, you, know, you mentioned that ball game. I, I'm interested to hear Reese and the guys talk about the UCLA BYU game at halftime. As a matter of fact, while we're at it, happy holidays to the guys in the studio. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a great week for them because they, they get to see them all. We yeah. only get to see the ones we actually oh. go to. But they're nice. Watch every one of them. They're nice and warm and cozy, and we've got it a little chilly out here, but. An amazing show put on by the Lobos and John Sullivan, who is two for two, including a 53 yarder on the try, basically an extra point, 20 yarder with three seconds in the half. So he is 28 for 31, leading the league in uh, made field goals and percentage, leading the nation in both those categories. This one is blocked. And the Wolfpack coming up with the block by Kenny Visor to end the first half. And Sullivan is down hurt. Wow. You remember, he's got the knee and he's wearing that brace and he hasn't been involved in, you know, tackling or being involved in kind of a play there at all. Uh, Sullivan is actually okay. It's the holder, I think, that's down. Yeah, it is the holder that got involved with, with that play over there. It's Brian Clampett who recovered it and got kicked in the head at the end there. Slow getting up. Now he's up. But a shocking end of the first half as uh, Mr. Automatic Sullivan has it blocked. First scoreless first half this year for the Nevada offense. 20 to nothing. As we go to Reese, Mark, and Lou with the Flomax Halftime Report. Gentlemen. for the second half now of the New Mexico Bowl in Albuquerque where the Lobos have dominated in about a 20 to nothing. Hard to imagine a better first half than the one UNM turned in. The only team all season to shut out the Wolfpack in the first half. They did it with 324 total yards, 271 passing yards by Donovan Porter. He was really overshadowed in the talk before this game by Colin Kaepernick, who was thrown for only 99 yards. Wolfpack held to 148 total. And if not for blocking a 20-yard chip shot field goal on the final play of the half, it would be 23 to nothing. Jordan Scott's kick down to the 11-yard line. Alex Rosenblum returns it out to the 25. Dave Barnett back with uh, Rod Gilmore and Dave Ryan. And really, the stories, two of them in the first half, were the excellence of New Mexico, but also how they were able to just smother any idea that Nevada had of getting something going offensively. I, I think that's right. I think it was about the New Mexico defense and what they did up front, particularly on first down. I mean, they'd taken away the running game two and a half yards average on first down for Nevada. They tried running that football in there, got nothing out of it. Really one big play, and uh, even that was just followed by a fumble. So it was just a series of struggles and an offense that averages 226 rushing, 263 passing, and you see all they've managed so far here. Well, the, the, the running on 49 yards and the two and a half yards, the running game down. So what do you do? You go to the passing game, and that has struggled as well because the running game hasn't been good. Here you see Kaepernick overthrowing a receiver after missing one inside. And then how about a drop pass or two like Lou Holtz talked about at halftime? And a good shot on him as you get him out of the pocket. And, and it's just been totally out of sync with this Nevada offense. And in my view, it all goes back to first down. As we take a look, is that Ian Clark coming Ian off? Ian Clark wow. injured on the kickoff. And they're taking him to the locker room. That is the Lobos' leading tackler, at least for the time being, unavailable. So the Wolfpack start from their 25. 
pistol quieted through the first half. Lippincott on the carry good for about three. Here's what happened on the kickoff to Clark. Well, there he is. Looks like he just kind of went down on that elbow and hyperextended that way because it wasn't uh, wasn't hit by anybody. He tries to make the play there. Now, when with him out, that'll put Clinton McPeak in that Lobo spot, that third uh, safety that they use. And McPeak plays a lot. He is not like this is the guy coming off the bench. They play a lot of guys defensively, so he's been on the field a lot already today. Second and seven for the Wolfpack. Kaepernick keeping it. Great ball handler. It's a good block and is just right at the marker for the first down. Marco Mitchell flattened Blake Lagon on that block at the corner. Well, here you'll see it. He doesn't have any idea this is coming. And he took it in the ribs. He got a shot in the ribs. Lagon gets it right in the ribs here. Here you see that. Oh. As, uh, yeah, Marco Mitchell and wide receivers live for getting those makeup shots on the defensive backs. And, and if Lagan isn't able to get up and get back in this ball game in a hurry, that'll be the second safety out of the ball game for New Mexico, even though he plays that left safety position. And you have Ian Clark, who plays the middle safety spot or that Lobo spot. And those are two key guys. Well, Clark, their leading tackler, being looked at in the locker room. Lagan, their sixth leading tackler from San Angelo, Texas, a junior. He's been he's been active today. He's broken up three uh, pass attempts already. Boy, so we've had the opening kick of the second half with an injury, and a second down. Run by Kaepernick. Lagon finally up, helped to the sideline. He saw the graphic on the 23 players that have played defense for New Mexico today, and that—that's the philosophy that Ose Lewis, a defensive coordinator, has to build depth, and that may come in handy for them today. So Kaepernick was inches short in the pistol on third and less than one, and Lippincott, I don't think, got there. I don't know if he even gained an inch. Hit by Tyler Donaldson first. Uh, I just wonder if Lippincott is, isn't isn't a little banged up or something. He, to me, he just doesn't seem to be getting off as quickly or as hard as he has in the past. And, you know, he didn't play a lot in that second quarter. And here he doesn't see that there's a guy in front of him. Like his eyes were closed or something. He runs right into that play by Tyler Donaldson, who beat the block inside to make the play. He beat the block of Alonzo Durham. Outstanding play by Donaldson to stuff Lippincott. And Zachary Whited as a punt take a Wolfpack bounce. O.J. Swift is up to the 28 on a 40-yard punt. So the Lobos will have it for the first time in the second half. Already two down on defense, but on the board, up by 20. This telecast available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. As a full moon rises over the Sandia Mountains, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Lobo's first offensive series of the second half, starting from their 28-yard line. There's room for Paul Baker into the secondary and still on his feet, out of bounds near the 35-yard line. It is hard to pick an MVP for New Mexico right now, and Paul Baker just made it harder, 37 yards. Well, watch the block as they pull around the guard here. Anthony Kilby, 75, comes up, seals that right there, and nice cut off of that by Baker. He gets into the secondary, and again, he's a different kind of runner than Rodney Ferguson, the starter who's out this ball game. He's smaller, more explosive, quicker, and gives you big plays. They are both just juniors. So Rocky Long, Dave Baldwin have got to be getting some ideas of how they can tandem Baker and Ferguson next year. Ordery at the line of scrimmage and by Nick Furr, senior strong side linebacker, who had only two starts his first three years, but this year has uh, blossomed into one of their most consistent defenders all season. I need more plays out of him. He's a guy who stepped up when they moved from that 3-4 defense to the 4-3 defense. Well, those go offset eye, second and ten. 
And Porter okay. going deep and broken up. Intended for Travis Brown and Devon Walker got a hand on it. Let's check in down below with Dave Bryant. All right, Dave did speak with both head coaches. Rocky Longstead, his team executed very well. Thought that maybe we should be up by more points. We saw the late field goal miss on the block for New Mexico. He thought the penetration was excellent from his defensive front. Chris Salt on the other side, guys from Nevada. Hot under the collar at his offensive line. Not plucking anyone. He said the front has got to step up big time. Guys, injury updates. Ian Clark is going to be out. Separated shoulder. Blake Lagana looking at him for broken ribs right now. Wow. That is horrendous news for the Lobos. Quarterback draw on third and ten and Porter. He gets it easily. Brought down by Pratt, 12 yards on third and 10. Well, how about Portery feeling that the opening was to the left side? He started up the middle, but felt that to the left side, went over there, had good blocks, was led by Baker. Now watch him. He sees this design to go up the middle, and he feels it to the outside where he's got Baker in front of him, and that's enough to get the first down. Up to the 23, the Wolfpack. First series, second half, direct snap to Baker. A la Arkansas's Wild Hawk formation. And no gain this time for Baker. One of the few times that the Wolfpack defense has strung him out. You know, I won't even call that the Wild Hog. I mean, to me, it's their version of it. It's just a, no, no, I mean, it's just a McFadden. I mean, McFadden kind of created this whole deal, you know, because he's such a phenomenal player. Get rid of the quarterbacks, put him back there, snap it to him, and everyone across the country started going to Arkansas to see how they did it. It's, it's the McFadden formation. All right, I'll go with that. Well earned by uh, McFadden. So well copied around the country. Quartery rolling. And throws it away. Ball intended to be a screen pass, and they'll have third down and ten. As Portery nears 300 passing yards. He's at 14 for 26, 271. A 66-yard score on the third play of the game to Marcus Smith. And later a 39-yarder to Travis Brown. You know, I didn't see the flag initially, but it looks like there's a flag down on the sideline. Yep, they threw one. And this Big 12 officiating crew led by Greg Burks. After the play, personal foul, number 70 of the offense, 15-yard penalty, third down. That's on the tackle, Devin Clark, who would like to know what he did. Uh, he's probably uh, protecting the quarterback at the end of the play. You know, linemen like to clean up at the end of a play. And if you're not paying attention, they'll take shots at you. Now, what's he do here? Yep, he takes a shot. Oh, well, and usually they get the second guy, but they don't get Johnson for the punch back, which was the second shot. He got a lot more of a blow in yeah. than uh, Devin Clark did. Yeah, they got Clark for the first shot. I think that's the first time I've ever seen the guy who throws the first punch get flat. And so I guess kudos to the officials for being right on it. Third and 25 now. Line to gain is the 13. Quartery. As uh, he hits Roland Bruno, a play that had no chance to pick up 25 yards unless Bruno turned in a terrific run after the catch. So John Sullivan back out. Hit two long field goals in the first half and then had a 20-yarder blocked on the final play of the half. You see, I don't count that as a miss because it's not his fault that the line didn't keep guys out. I, I think that dollar bill in the in the uh, plant foot is still money. It's still good. 44-yarder here. 53 and 45 in the first half. At 53-yarder, best of his career by seven yards. Nation's leader in kicks and percentage. Another one blocked. And this one is going to be returned into Lobo territory. Nick Fur brings it back 12 yards. So Rocky Long has an issue now with his line on placement kicks. Two in a row blocked against the best kicker in the country who had missed only three all year until these last two. That's about the only thing that went wrong. Now look in the center. You'll see an arm come up and block it right there. Right there. Now, who, who's, whose arm is that? Ah, that's Matt Hines. Hines 57, the ketchup sauce. 
Well, just for variety, he mixed in a block field goal, but the low bow defense goes back to what they've been doing all day, and that is stuffing any runs up the middle. No gain for Lippincott. Jeremy Lovato was there, the backup nose tackle. Now watch this kick again. Look, a false start there by Sullivan. Maybe that threw the timing off a little bit for him, and he wasn't able to get it up as high as he'd like to over that outstretched arm of Hines. Timing so important on field goals. He was 28 for 31 for the season before these last two blocks. So one thing has gone uh, tremendously right for the Wolfpack. Not here, though. Kaepernick runs out of time and is sacked by Michael Tui, and that gives him the Mountain West career record. 20 and a half career sacks. He breaks Chase Ortiz's mark. Ortiz formerly with TCU. At no point in this ball game has it been established that they can protect the quarterback. And that time it was all on Luke Lippincott, who was supposed to pick up Tui and couldn't handle it. And Tui just went right around him. But they've been able to bring pressure all day long. Loss of 10, third, and 20 back at their 46. And back in the pistol. Quarterback draw. And Kaepernick brought down to the 47 of New Mexico. Zach Arnett, who backs up Cody Case at middle linebacker on the stop. And even though he's a backup, Arnett is their third leading tackler for the year. Well, that just speaks to the fact that New Mexico really does you know, get their backups in the ball game. Well, they, they played 23 on defense in the first half. 17 had at least one tackle. Everybody has had a shot at Kaepernick and Lippincott and company. So another Zachary Whitehead punt. And this one might have been downed at the one. Nope, touchback. Close, but a 47-yarder will net only 27. 817 to the third, still 20 to nothing, New Mexico. ESPN College Football, the New Mexico Bowl, is brought to you by Sports Authority, dedicated to the dedicated, and TomTom. Tom. To learn more, visit TomTom.com. They call it the land of enchantment, the Sandia Mountains surrounding Albuquerque, the capital city of New Mexico. And the Lobos, hosting the second annual New Mexico Bowl, own Nevada. 20 to nothing, they take over after the touchback at their 20. And back to work, Paul Baker having no trouble turning the corners today. Nine yards here. And don't forget, Capital One Bowl Week featuring over 20 games, 12 days. And the ESPN family of networks continues. After we're done here, we go to the Pioneer Las Vegas Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week. 8 Eastern on ESPN tonight in the matchup between UCLA and number 17, BYU. So BYU out of the Mountain West will maybe get a chance to make it a Mountain West sweep today. With this shot, the Lobos are turning in. But this is coming back. Baker reaches midfield on a 22-yarder, but a flag thrown back at the 30. Holding number 75 of the offense. 10-yard penalty, second down. Anthony Kilby, senior guard. You mentioned UCLA playing tonight. A lot of 6-6 six and six teams are not in bowl games. UCLA is one of those 6-6 six and six teams that is in there. And, you know, you look at Nevada's performance and, and the like, you wonder, are there other 6-6 six and six teams that maybe deserve to be there instead of teams like, well, Nevada that's struggling here? And I think the onus is on UCLA and other teams. California comes to mind. You know, are they going to step up and play well, or are they playing out the string and not really motivated in their bowl games? Three months ago, if you had told Louisville and South Carolina fans their teams, which had reached the top ten, would not even be in a bowl, not a one would believe it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, if you don't earn a great season to get to a bowl game, there is this impression that you're, you're not motivated, not playing well. And if that's going to be the case, maybe you start looking outside of the BCS to find your top teams. 
Timeout. 721 to go third quarter and a 20 to nothing Lobo blowout in progress. Back after the timeout and a second and 11 for New Mexico from their own 19. Motion out of the backfield. Travis Brown on wide left. Fortery rolling that way. And looking to his other standout wide out, Marcus Smith unable to hang on to it. With Uche Anyanwu providing the coverage. Third and 11. Well, they've had this play open a lot. They simply run a corner route behind a short out, and they try to squeeze it in there between the two defenders, the safety in the corner. And this ball's just dropped. And Smith has had a tremendous ball game. That's the first drop I've seen from him. And you know, watching him on tape, he doesn't drop balls. No. Well, his first catch today, he didn't drop. On the third play from scrimmage, he took it 66 yards to set the tone. Travis Brown later added the 39-yarder. Those are the two touchdowns. And this is Smith going nowhere. No gain. Let's check in with Dave Ryan. Well, Dave, what an unbelievably tough season for Lobo wideout Marcus Smith back on September 15th after a win over Arizona. He found that his mother, Sheila, had passed away from a heart attack back home in San Diego. Due to his family situation, Marcus was left to pay for the funeral expenses by himself. That's when the Albuquerque community really stepped up. A local bank started a fund, and in a few hours, all the money was raised to cover the cost. He tells us the support in his time of need was unforgettable, Dave. Yep. One of the best stories in uh, New Mexico season out of a tragedy, the fact that he lost his mother, and then that was followed by, as uh, they've said, in a matter of hours, $6,000 raised so that Marcus would not have to foot the funeral costs by himself. Well, he's been through a, a very tough time, not just with losing his mother, you know, but he, he lost a brother and a in a, a violent crime, a, a gun shooting accident, has has a brother also in prison, and, and Rocky Long uh, told us he's a very sensitive young man, and, and they felt like they had to have him get the ball early in the ball game because he's very sensitive. If you get it to him and he's emotional, things will go well. well we say that, and, and you know, sometimes that works out to perfection. Sometimes the game doesn't dictate it. It definitely worked out that way for uh, Smith and the Lobos today. Brandon Frager spelling lip and cut. Are you surprised Nevada has started so many series with that run straight up the middle, which has not gotten them anything all day? Well, I started harping on this in the first quarter that they were telegraphing pretty much on first down uh, the running plays and that New Mexico was loading up and daring them to throw on first down. And Chris Alton company haven't changed. They haven't thrown the ball on first down, and they find themselves in second and long time and time again. It's the nation's number seven offense, averaging 489 yards per game. They're at 166 total yards, under six minutes in the third. Kaepernick with a swing pass to Frager and felt it at the 36-yard line. Major Mosley delivers the hit. Hey, talk about how good this offense is. They haven't been shut out in a long, long time. And you got to go back to 1980. The last time they were shut out. And the team that did it? Tell me. Weber State. Oh. Ten to nothing. Wow. What were you doing back in 1980? Uh, let's see. I was uh, just beginning my broadcast career. 27 years away from my pairing with Rodney Gilmore. Looking into the future. Third and nine. Three receivers right for Kaepernick. And the ball is tipped and incomplete. Intended over the middle for Adam Bishop. You go back to 1980. And for those of you who were not around, Jimmy Carter was ending his presidency. Blondie had the top song, Call Me. Star Wars, one of the sequels, The Empire Strikes Back, top movie. Georgia, behind Herschel Walker, won the national championship. And the miracle on ice happened in January of that year. Lake Placid, New York. The U.S. Olympic hockey, hockey team knocking off the Soviet Union. Our under 30 audience is going, The Empire Strikes Back was a movie <laughs> back in 1980? 45-yard <laughs> punt, fair caught by Frankie Solomon. No telling how educational that last graphic was. <laughs> or a number of people in our audience. 
Jimmy Carter was president. Uh, hopefully they knew that. <laughs> Kaepernick getting some attention. He came off the field. Well, he's had a tough, tough afternoon. Wincing. Yeah. He's had a lot to wince about. Nine of 19 through the air for 100 yards. He's the fifth rated passer in the country. New Mexico defense has never given him a chance to display what he's been like all year. Bruno in a foot race. And finally knocked out of bounds by Uche Anyanwu. Roland Bruno taking a page from the Marcus Smith, Travis Brown playbook. 58 yard catch and run. Watch the timing on this. This thing is almost picked off there. Look at that linebacker come up who isn't able to get it. And then a great block by Paul Baker on Paul Pratt springs Bruno. Now Baker 22 right there gets the block just to the right side of the screen. That's enough to get Pratt out of the way and that allows Bruno to pick up another 20 25 yards. Yeah, Jerome Johnson almost had a crack and an interception and probably an easy pick yeah. six maybe untouched. So from the 28 yard line Baker looks to change direction and stays with the right corner inside the five first and goal. Baker well over 100 yards 24 more on that one which started right. He then had a change of heart, thought maybe there's more room to the left. Nope, let's go with the original idea. He hid. Did you see him hide there? He's only about 5'8 or so. He kind of hid back there and just waited for a moment. Now watch this good block. If you're a good receiver, you got to block downfield. Look at what Marcus Smith is doing. He is dominating that defensive back out there. That's a great, great job. First and goal, four yard line for the Lobo. Already leading 20 to nothing. Baker given a chance to finish it off, and he gets two. 14 carries now, 126 yards for Paul Baker for the ineligible Rodney Ferguson at running back. Baker at 298 yards all season, has never scored a touchdown in his career. He's a junior, and uh, maybe they give it to him another time or two here and give him an opportunity for his first career touchdown. Well, we asked Rocky Long the other day about not having Ferguson. He says, hey, oh, well, this guy will play and he'll do great. <laughs> well, we, you know, have nothing statistically on which to base any belief in that. He is not quite to the goal line here. They're going to mark him down inches shy. But Rocky Long didn't even know how many times Baker had carried a, the ball in a ball game. He said, oh, he's carried seven or eight times, and he was told his 14 was the most he'd carried. He said, see, that's even better for us. Well, he's at 15 for 127, about eight and a half yards per carry. And a one back, they give it to him again. And he is stopped short again. Actually loses a couple of feet. Uh, he, he's slamming in there with every bit of his 190 pounds listed anyway. I'm not sure he's that big. They wanted to get him that touchdown badly. Kevin Baspin hits him just inside the one. So fourth and goal from the one. Well, and they're going to, I think, give yeah. the offense one more crack at the touchdown. Yes, yeah, send him wide. Send him off tackle. Although 23 nothing, you got a better than three touchdown lead. Smith in motion. They hand it to him. He cuts it back and is also stopped short. Wow. Terrific goal line stand by the Nevada defense. And Justin Jackson comes up from free safety to bring down Smith on the end around. Wow. How about Nevada stepping up there? I mean, that's almost territory where you concede game game over. Those guys dug in and then had a goal line stand. So they have blocked two field goals. And now they give the Lobos four cracks inside the four and they stop them all four times. Still 20 to nothing. Twenty to nothing, New Mexico. After the goal line stand by the Wolfpack defense, they take over at their own one, but still within twenty. Late third quarter, and Kaepernick rolls to throw out of his own end zone, incomplete. 
Dave Barnett with Rod Gilmore and Dave Ryan and today's storyline presented by K Jewelers. It has been all New Mexico. They have bottled up the nation's number five passer. Redshirt freshman Colin Kaepernick has been nothing like his regular season self. Nation's best kicker John Sullivan hit a career best 53 yarder 45 yarder. His last two have been blocked. He'd missed only three all year before then. Paul Baker for the ineligible Rodney Ferguson has been an amazing story. 16 carries for 127 yards. But Nevada just stuffed him and an end around attempt on fourth down and goal from the one. And again, Kaepernick throwing out of his end zone and Mike McCoy brings it in. And good for 11 yards and the first down. Well, we talked about the storylines. Big plays out of New Mexico it was Marcus Smith early on getting the big touchdown pass. And then Brian Howard got one as well. Travis, Travis Brown got one as well. The field goals came through nice and clearly. And then the struggles of the freshman quarterback, Colin Kaepernick. Overthrowing receivers, getting sacked a bit, not having enough time to get anything done. And the offense has struggled because Rocky Long's team has done everything right on defense. Everything. Absolutely. Three straight three and outs by the Wolfpack offense just ended with that 11 yard completion to McCoy. Now Kaepernick keeping all the way. And Kaepernick with two flags down, brought down in the secondary with a gain of 13 if it stands. And, and a third flag came in from about 25 yards away. An official threw it from the 45 yard line down to the 20. We may actually have three different yeah. violations here. Usually, a couple of guys see the same thing. During the run, holding number 98 of the offense. Ten-yard penalty, first down. Well, everybody saw <laughs> Junior Paloka. Boy, that was a pretty obvious Whoa. hold. Oh, everybody. Got Hi Junior hide it Paloka. a little better next time, Junior. Bring those hands in. Junior, we should point out, has played half this season with a broken hand. You have to give him that for toughness. But a first down for Kaepernick is wiped out. And they're back at their 12-yard line under two minutes to go in the third quarter. The pistol has uh, not discombobulated the Lobo defense one bit. And a bad snap brought in by Kaepernick. Back at the six. What else can go wrong? It's hard to believe that this is the same offense that put up, what, 60, 67 points against Boise State? Yep, in four overtimes. Yeah, and they got nothing today. And this thing has been shut down. Now, a bad snap. Now, that was the initial concern with the uh, pistol when they went to it, that that four-yard snap would be a problem. But the problem today is when they haven't been able to protect the quarterback, they haven't been able to pick up the blitz. It's come off the edge. It's come inside. And they've had no running game at all. They've averaged 36 points per game. And they had a non-conference schedule that included opening at Nebraska and at Northwestern. Kaepernick brings it back from the goal line. And this has been the story for him all day. Bottled up, forced to run for his life. And chased down by Brett Madsen. Well, he needs to be more patient. You know, he looked at one guy, and when he didn't find him, he started to panic and decided to scramble. Now, right there, he's not open, and now he decides to go. He had time. He was not under duress, and he could have thrown the ball away or looked for a secondary receiver. But he relies on his feet, and that doesn't get him out of trouble right now. No, he has been uh, one of the better running quarterbacks in the country. He's yep. averaged better than six yards per run. Quarterbacks average better than one yard per run. That means they're a threat. I tell you, though, if this offense doesn't get going, a lot of folks around the country that have picked it up are going to think about slowing down on him. He ran for 177 yards against Boise State and has to throw this one away. That series, with the exception of the 11-yard pass to McCoy, the New Mexico defense took away absolutely everything. As we end the third quarter in the second annual New Mexico Bowl, all New Mexico, 20 to nothing as we head to the fourth.
Back at Albuquerque on Route 66 from 1926 for the next 60 years, the Main Street of America began in Chicago, right through Albuquerque on the way to Los Angeles, almost 2,500 miles. Not too far from it here, University Stadium, Zachary Whitehead's ninth punt of the day is going to be returned by O.J. Swift down to the 32-yard line. Everything continues to go the Lobos' way, and a good kick, 45 yards, brought back 16 by Swift. At his own little route, 66. Nice little, uh, little opening there. Now, you know, I've never seen route 66 in Los Angeles. I've seen the 405. I've seen the 5 and the 10. Yeah, I don't think it's known as such anymore out there. Yeah, I've not seen that. Well, I've seen the Ventura Freeway, but not Route 66. A pretty big deal through Oklahoma, Panhandle of Texas, New Mexico, Flagstaff. Probably better known between Chicago and L.A. And the inspiration for one of the uh, biggest selling songs of the 50s and 60s. Probably recorded by 50 or 60 different artists. Donovan Portery on first down decides to keep and he's got a lot of room in front of him runs out 23 yard line close for a first down and uh, for more on Route 66 Dave Ryan yeah we sat that crossroads right on Central Ave and about Fifth Avenue in downtown Albuquerque it's kind of a neat area there the highway as you said Dave, 2500 miles from Chicago to Los Angeles old Route 66 actually decommissioned by the highway system in 1985 but around these parts you see the signs everywhere still a big part of Albuquerque culture well Porter we got the first down at the 23 and the quick outside toss to Travis Brown runs after the catch for another first down a gain of 12 to the 11. Well, that's because he got great blocking out there by the receivers. And in particular, Berlan Bruno, number eight. Watch him out here get a nice block right there. He's out there doing his job, holding up that corner, Devon Walker, making sure that he helps his teammate pick up that yardage. And those guys don't get a lot of credit, you know, for that. But that's what makes the play happen. Six catches, 114 yards, and a touchdown for Travis Brown in his final games, the Lobos, senior West Covina, California. So from the 11, first down. And they toss to Baker on the reverse to Brown, read well by Nevada. And Kevin Bassford was there to foil it for a loss back at the 17. Nice job by Bassford. He's only a freshman and a, and a big one at that. He's, he's about 6'6", towers over guys, and he stayed home. Well, the last two exotics for the Lobos have not gone well. Fourth and goal from the one. They ran the end around yeah. to Smith. Uh, yeah. No yeah. game. This one loses five. Remember we talked about running your trick plays first? Well, they ran theirs first, and now they're emptying the bag. All of them, getting them out because the offseason's coming up. Yeah, lose them if you don't use them in this fourth quarter. Second and 15. Baker picks his way for a couple. And it'll be third and 13 for the touchdown. They need 15. Paul Baker now at 129 yards on 17 carries. If you had told Rocky Long before the game, Paul Baker substituting for Rodney Ferguson, their first team all Mountain West running back, two years running, would have probably even better production than they would have expected from Ferguson. I'm not even sure if even the head coach would have believed that. Baker may well be the Mexico Bowl MVP. Portery pressured, sacked back at the 27-yard line by Jerome Johnson. So the Wolfpack defense showing up here in the second half, even though their offense is still shut out, maybe for the first time in 330 games. The defense, though, has turned into goal line stand. They knocked the Lobo offense back 15 yards here. Well, how about the kicking game in Sullivan? He's just been fantastic. You know, can't necessarily blame the couple of blocks on him, but that dollar that he wears in his plant foot for kicking has been perfect for him. He's, he's been stellar. Again. So a 43-yarder here. Mm -hmm. Last two have been blocked. <laughs> Only his fourth and fifth 
Missed kicks oh, all God. year. This time he has plenty of lift, but is wide right. He's missed three straight after missing three all season. There goes a dollar. Yep. I think it's, it's time to change bills. The luck on that one has finally run out. 11.57 to go, still 20 nothing. Capital One Bowl Week. The time of year when day after day, night after night, those that have earned their way come to celebrate the rewards of a season well played. For the rest of us, watch and enjoy an American holiday tradition. And following us, we go to the Pioneer Las Vegas Bowl, the matchup between UCLA and BYU as Capital One Bowl Week continues. 8 Eastern from Sam Boyd Stadium in Vegas. Here, 11.57 remaining with the full moon rising over the Sandia Mountains. And the Nevada defense has shut out New Mexico on the scoreboard here in the second half. Can the offense come up with anything? Well, to start, a near interception by Clint McPeak. Well, there you have it tonight in UCLA. I guess the real question is, will those guys play for Dwayne Walker? the defensive coordinator and a lot of those players want him to become the head coach and, and it's not a bad choice for UCLA their recruiting class is top five right now well that's the question really is Dwayne Walker auditioning to get the permanent head coaching job now since Mike Bellotti turned it down yesterday yeah. his defense was uh, easily the best part of that unit this year Kaepernick sets up the screen Frager out of one tackle, I guess a couple of three yards more. Stephen Hutchison there. Well, I would say this about that ball game. You're looking at a UCLA team that's six and six. If Dwayne Walker can get a six and six team to play hard in this, that ball game after the disappointing season when they had high expectations, then they've got something special in a coach team. If UCLA goes through, through the motions and they don't play for him, uh, that might tell you it's yep. not he's not the guy. Yep, but if he does get a good effort out of them and with coaches around the country not jumping at the UCLA opportunity. I agree. Well, as he hire him and find a coordinator and there you go. Absolutely. Even if he doesn't get the head coaching job, whoever does ought to do anything he can to keep Wayne Walker running the defense. Here's third and 15. Okay. Marco Mitchell finally gets loose over the middle and down to the 42 hit by DeAndre Wright after 21 yards. Now, if Nevada can come up with one of those big plays, and here you see just a square in route, and they do a good job of making sure they get the passing lane available to get the ball to Marco Mitchell. But if they can come up with one of those big plays, remember they have 23 big plays over 25 yards for the season. They can get back in it because their defense yep. has kept them in it. Only Oklahoma has more. But the Lobo defense has limited big plays to almost nothing. And knocked away by Glover Quinn here, the overthrow. You can see the frustration on Colin Kaepernick's face. And there he is looking at you. He's just hasn't gone well tonight. He hasn't been able to run the ball the way he normally does. Hasn't been able to get it down the field through the air to his receivers. That last throw was one of the two best we've seen other than the one on the sideline. Their biggest problem has been a consistent lack of production on first down. They yep. averaged less than a yard on first down in the second half. As they've gotten away from handing off to Lipton Cotton Frager right up the middle where nothing's been available. Kaepernick keeps to the 46, and it'll be third and about six. Well, give Osei Lewis, the defensive coordinator for New Mexico, credit for having a good game plan. I mean, he told us several days ago that his key was to keep that guy in the pocket. There's Osei Lewis. And he's been with Rocky Long for a long time and done a great job, and he's been on a number of lists for possible head coaching jobs, you know, down around the country. But he said if he can keep him in the pocket and turn him into a pocket quarterback, that they play well. This is a sensational coaching job by O.C. Lewis and Rocky Long. The rest of the 
teams in bowl games this year will be hard pressed to have any of their units perform better than Ose Lewis's Lobo defensive unit has performed here. They have held an offense that averages 489 yards to 200 with 948 to go. Timeout. ESPN College Football, the New Mexico Bowl, is brought to you by the Albuquerque Convention and Visitors Bureau. Albuquerque, it's a trip. Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mbusa.com. And McDonald's. Well, that's the Sandia Tram, 2.7 miles from 10,378 feet at the peak of the Sandias. And a third down and six for Nevada with 9.48 to play. Colin Kaepernick intended for Mike McCoy and I think partially broken up along the way as Michael Tui provided pressure of his Nevada offense, seventh in the country, averaging 489 yards. Today they have 200. Yeah, well, your story, run defense. Where they shut down that running game, and on first down, nothing was doing. They forced them into long situations, and then the pressure came. And Zachary White had just punted for the tenth time. And gets a head bounce out of it. New Mexico will have it around the 17, 18 yard line. Just a 37 yard punt. Let's go down to Dave Ryan. Hey, early in the broadcast, Joe Maloof led the starting lineups for New Mexico. Back in the 70s, he played college football here at New Mexico. He's a defensive back before going on to help manage his family's business group. They now own the Sacramento Kings. He was teammates with James Bell, also a D-back, who went to play on in the CFL. James was paralyzed back in 1986 while playing with the Edmonton Eskimos. This past October at an alumni function, Joe met up with James again. He was struggling to find work and with his finances since his injury. And Joe was really inspired by James' story. He wanted to help his old teammate out. He bought him a car, rented him an apartment, and helped with James's finances. Also established the James Bell Scholarship at New Mexico. It'll be given next year to a Lobo player whose eligibility has expired, but still has a year to go toward his degree. A nice act, certainly, from Joe Maloof. Yep, those uh, Maloof brothers have a lot of fun out there running their casinos and the Sacramento Kings, but they do a lot of good, too. Travis Brown takes the hitch forward for about six yards to the 25. And the possibility of the first shutout for Nevada since 1980 continues to loom larger with every minute. And the first bowl victory since the 1961 Aviation Bowl for New Mexico appears almost a certainty as we go under nine minutes. And Rocky Long spent a lot of time thinking about how to change the fact that he hadn't won a bowl game in his previous experiences. Baker. Through the initial wall and a first down to the 32. New Mexico has one of the six longest bowl losing streaks in college football. I, I bet you could guess a few of them, right? Well, Rice. Yeah, yeah okay. that 1954 game, their last win, the famous off the bench tackle by Tommy Lewis of Alabama against Dickie Magel. Yeah. Vandy since 55, New Mexico State since 60, and uh, New Mexico in the one and only Aviation Bowl beat Western Michigan in Dayton. Now, my question, as Baker carries again, is who in Dayton thought it's a great idea <laughs> in December to have a bowl game? They drew on a 33-degree day, 3,600, making it the first and only Aviation Bowl. Oh, that makes sense. Who could have been surprised by that? I don't know, but that man made some changes to change his results in bowl games. In the past, he was focused on building his team for next year, and they lost all four bowl games. Uh, nothing against Dayton, but Dayton is a bowl game. I'm not sure when that ever made sense. <laughs> Baker continues to slash into the Wolfpack secondary, brought down by Nick Furr. And uh, Rocky Long, like Chris Hall, former quarterback, now coaching his alma mater. Bowl eligible ever since 2001. Only school in the Mountain West that can say that. Fifth in the last six years. And the only school in the conference with six or more wins every year since 01. 
you know, and, and he and Chris Ald are part of a dying breed, you know, coaches who go back and coach at their alma maters and stay there a long time. I mean, we're seeing that, that change dramatically. Well, Durrell no longer at UCLA. Rich Rodriguez no longer at West Virginia. Josh Fussell carries. Dave Ryan has more. Well, Dave, speak about Rocky Long at his alma mater here in New Mexico doing so well. How about Chris? All the 191 wins in the College Football Hall of Fame, but he was a quarterback for the Wolfpack as well back in the 1960s. A tremendous career as well for him coaching. Then Rocky Long at New Mexico played quarterback three times, was his team's offensive MVP, and three times was the WAC Offensive Player of the Year as well. Each talking this week, guys, so very proud to be involved with their alma mater. And for Chris Hall, who twice has retired, twice has come back, he is in the College Football Hall of Fame. Only two other active coaches, Dave, are there, Joe Paterno and Bobby Bowden. And he beat them both in one of his retirements. Fifth all-time in active victories is Portery. Throws off the hands of Chris Mark, his tight end. Chris Alt is right up there in the all-time victory list among active coaches behind Bowden, Paterno, Trestle, and Beamer. And this is his third stint at the bottom, the fourth year of his third stint. From 76 to 92, got him from Division II to 1AA to 1A. Took him to a bowl their first year of 1A, 1992. Became their AD in 93 for one year. Back to coach, 94, 95. Back to AD, 96 through 03. And then took over the reins as the program, uh, in a lot of ways, had gotten out of control. They had a lot of players with off the field problems, criminal issues with some of them. And all, not only cleaned all that up, he has turned this into a consistent winner and uh, an innovative offensive program. They've not been able to show any of that this game, but shouldn't take away from, from what Chris Alt in his many stints as the head coach at his alma mater has been able to accomplish. But when he came back after coming out of retirement, you know, they had nine players arrested over a year and a half period under Chris Torme, and he, he took over that and cleaned everything up and got it going in the right direction. Jordan Scott hit after the punt, and there is a flag. See if it's 5 or 15 yards as the punt rolls dead at 14. Kenny Visor, who blocked Personal one foul. of the Sullivan Rusty field the kicker, goals, number 32 ran into the kicker here. The Stevie team, 15-yard penalty, first down. And it's 15, and it's a first down. Wow. But here you'll see it. And the 15-yarder means it was very uh, flagrant in the sense that it was an unprotected punter who had a risk of injury. And you see leg up in the air, cut him underneath with the other leg, and that is 15 yards because you have to protect the vulnerable player, and Scott limps off. Well, that alone makes the 15-yard the call the correct one. And hopefully Jordan Scott's going to be okay. The opening kickoff, Ian Clark, New Mexico's leading tackler, left with a possible separation of his shoulder. Blake Lagon, a couple of plays later, left with possible fractured ribs. So from the 36, back to work, Baker. And Paul Baker with another first down to the 23. 13 more yards, he's at 160. Can there be any more debate? <laughs> Who is the MVP of this game? <laughs> yeah, okay. Are you convinced now? All right, okay, so we were talking about whether Marcus Smith or Donovan Portery or Baker deserve to be the MVP. And there you see the 160 yards. And this guy has done a lot. I thought Smith and Portery did enough early in the ball game to put New Mexico up. But Baker has clearly dominated the last two quarters of the ball game. Well, multiple worthy candidates. Yep. Portery's thrown for 352 yards, two touchdowns. But Baker as a backup. Great story. The biggest question mark of the game and has turned into a major exclamation point. Pass almost intercepted by a diving. Jonathan Amaya. Well, you, you, you talk about Baker. And not only was he a backup, you're, you're talking about a guy that they never expected or never saw as a star. And he spent two years on the scout team, on the practice team, running the other team's plays, not their own plays. And he became a backup last season and got more time this year. And now in their biggest game, a bowl game, he turns in a stellar performance. 
He, he has done everything but get his first career touchdown, and they gave him three cracks inside the four back uh, in the third quarter. Deep into the end zone, broken up, intended for Smith, and Paul Pratt was there. Paul Pratt all over Marcus Smith. Well-thrown ball, and this is just a very nice job by Pratt at the end to get his left arm in there and knock it out. A little surprise. Just reading the eyes of Smith. Yeah. Is that all Pratt can yeah. do here? Yeah, you know, you, you watch for the eyes to get bigger. And when you see the hands go up and the eyes get bigger, then you reach up if you can't turn your head around. And he couldn't turn his head around, but he read the eyes and saw the arms go up and reacted nicely. Now, the Lobos have 523 yards, 352 passing, 171 rushing. Still, the Nevada defense has had a good second half. They shut him out. Block two kicks. Turn into goal line stand. Well, the yardage won't really tell any part of the story of what that part of the Nevada team has done here in the second half. Diving catch, Roland Bruno at the 20, still eight yards short of the first. Let me ask you a question. Are you surprised that New Mexico continues to throw the football here under five minutes? Because I am. Because normally I would expect the team to kind of go with their four-minute offense and bleed the clock in the game, go home and take your win. I think if, if Ferguson were available at 230 pounds, he would be carrying every play. But Baker at 5'7", 195 just is not that type of back. So I think that's the only reason that's not happening. Sullivan, who has missed three straight, two blocks, on to try a 37-yarder. He had missed three all year before his last three tries here. And this time he is back on the mark. The All-America who kicks with a torn left ACL in his plant foot. With the only points for either team in the second half. Now 23-0 Lobos. a slow start. LaDainian Tomlinson and the Chargers have roared back, winning eight of their last ten and taking the AFC West. Now can they keep improving their playoff position? The Chargers against the Broncos on Christmas Eve at 8 Eastern on ESPN's Monday Night Football. The Chargers starting to look more like themselves after a rocky start. And here all New Mexico, 23-0 with 418 remaining. There are going to be, especially, I think, coaches around college football who look at this score and are dumbfounded yep. at the fact that the Nevada offensive unit has been shut out with 418 remaining. Well, I don't even think that New Mexico thought they'd be able to hold them down like this. And I think they were hoping to outscore them a bit. But to shut them out, unbelievable. Number seven offense in the country, 489 yards per game, 36 points per game. Number five rated passer in the country. Shut out for the first time in 27 years. Unless they can put together a scoring march from the 30-yard line here. 18-yard return by... Chris Wellington. And we approach... The Pioneer Las Vegas Bowl, UCLA against BYU in a rematch. How hard can it be to beat a team twice in one year? UCLA's got that opportunity. Well, and they'll have to do it without their top two quarterbacks. No Patrick Cowan, no Ben Olsen. And Olsen was looking forward to being in this ball game. You know, he's he transferred from BYU to UCLA, but he can't play. Not healthy. Both back from the 30. 4-12 remaining, still with only 200 total yards, less than half their per-game average. Another bad snap. Kaepernick connects with Marco Mitchell for 10 yards and the first down. You know, you and I did on radio the UCLA-USC game, and Cowan and Olsen weren't healthy, and you could tell even warming up that neither one of them Given the chance, we're going to be able to be 100% in that game now. So much time has elapsed. That was a de December 1st game. They're still not yeah, yeah. going to be able to go. Yeah, they're, that's going to hurt UCLA offensively. Uh, they'll struggle, but their defense is top notch. So there's no question. UCLA can play great defense. So that follows the conclusion of our game here in Albuquerque with Kaepernick throwing deflected over the middle. 
And broken up by DeAndre Wright. First team, all Mountain West corner. And this guy is really special at that corner spot. He, he didn't play defense until he got to New Mexico. He didn't play defensive back in high school. He was a running back and a good one. He had to learn how to play corner here, and he's turned into their best covered corner. The coaches say in three years, he has taken a total of three bad breaks on balls. <laughs> I'd do that in a practice. <laughs> Last six games, he's had nine passes thrown his way before tonight. Not that many his way in this one. Second and ten. Pressure again on Kaepernick. Heaves and almost connects with Kyle Sammons. An amazing throw considering what was bearing down on Kaepernick. Well, he threw to a spot. And he was, Kaepernick was under a lot of pressure with McPeak and Case, Cody Case. They were both there, and so he had to get rid of it. Put it up there. And it almost came up yep. with it. I'm not sure Sammons looked for it in time. Not been able to bring it in. Third and ten. 337 remaining. Streak of 329 consecutive games without being shut out. In serious jeopardy here for the Wolfpack. And we've got a five-man rush teeing off. Kaepernick lets it go, overthrown, intended for McCoy, and Wright was the nearest man to it. Fourth and ten. Uh, once again, Kaepernick under duress. Late in the ball game, they bring it again. More pressure, a five-man blitz. They get another hit on Kaepernick. That's the way you finish off a shutout. They never backed off. They kept going after him. Are you a little surprised they're punting? No. Three, they'll get it back one more time. Yeah. 332 yeah. left. Yeah. Whited handles a high kick and his 11th punt comes back from the nine yard line. Frankie Solomon with a short return. On a 51 yarder, Whited's best of the day. Well, Rodney, you lose the argument. <laughs> and we win. All of those in the truck, all of those, except for you here in the booth. Vote for Paul Baker, our Capital One player of the game. You know, Paul Baker wins, deservedly so. It's a guy who stepped in for Rodney Ferguson, who declared ineligible academically for this bowl game. And when they needed runs, they needed to pick up things in the second, third, fourth quarter, this guy did it. And he got some help from his receivers who opened things up for him, but he took advantage of it and responded with a great afternoon. 21 carries, 161 yards, and uh, not done yet. As we get under three minutes remaining, now Donovan that... Portery is done, and uh, he finishes. You got to vote for me. <laughs> Portery finishes with 300. 54 yards and two touchdowns on 20 out of 36. That's pretty good, isn't it? That's MVP numbers. <laughs> Except for the backup running back going for 167. And how about that New Mexico defense? You could just give them all the MVPs. Ryan Clampett will finish this one off. Senior from Dallas. Career backup. And Josh Fussell gets near the first down. He's looking for Reed's numbers, and he's got two more intriguing years here ahead of him at New Mexico. And those two touchdown passes came early, one on the third play of the game, and that put New Mexico up and got the ball rolling. So he responded to the challenge from his, his coach, offensive coordinator, Dave Baldwin, told him he had to come up with a big game and had to play better than he had in the last couple, and Porter Reed did. Well, the quarterbacking benchmark here is Stony Case in the early 90s. And here comes the dunking, first of all. A first down carry. And now Rocky Long is doused in victory. Oh, it's too cold for that. It is too cold for that. <laughs> but Rocky, I think that jacket looks pretty waterproof. Yeah, I don't did, think he's uh, too badly off here. Yeah, it did kind of roll off of him. Watch, it just rolls right off of him. It's a good dunking. They got him set up nicely. Look at that. It Never rolled. felt it. Yeah. That, that, that is the driest dunking I've ever seen. 
Well, this streak will finally end. Since that victory over Western Michigan in Dayton in the one and only Aviation Bowl in 1961, the last bowl victory for the Lobos. As Russell carries again, we get now to 122 remaining, and that trophy will stay here in Albuquerque for the Lobos. I think these players aren't happy for him. Oh, they're happy for him, and they're, they're happy. They had a lot of fun this year. One of the changes, you know, Rocky Long called around, talked to a few other coaches about bowl prep, and they said, look, make sure your guys have fun. Loosen them up a little bit. And he's done that, and they responded with a great performance tonight, and he gets his first bowl win. What did you say at the beginning of the ball game? This game was a matter of will. Whose will will prevail? And that is a gigantic check mark in the New Mexico column. Offense, 537 total yards. Defense has held Nevada to less than half their average. With only 210 yards. And they're going to be barring a surprising last 122 shutout for the first time. Since 1980, a streak of 329 games. Second longest in the history of college football and the longest active streak without a shutout. Clampett with the shotgun quarterback keeper with another first down and with a minute 15 remaining. The Lobos will continue trying to just run out this clock and this shutout victory. Dave Ryan. Well, we spoke with Rocky Lawn this week, the head coach in New Mexico, and asked him how much it would mean to win a bowl game at New Mexico. His alma mater, we saw earlier with the great records he had as a quarterback here back in the late 60s and early 70s. And also, the local media will have to have a brand new question to ask Rocky Lawn because over and over they've asked about the bowl streak, and finally it's over. He said, look, no one asked me about the bowl streak outside Albuquerque. Now, local media needs something new to talk about with Rocky. Yeah, now, the, well, can you get a bowl winning streak? What about that? Yeah. Matt Quillen on the carry. The question he's going to get next year will be winning the conference because he had eight guys make the first team all conference this year. Big statement here as well for the Mount West Conference because during the regular season, the Western Athletic Conference clearly was the better league with Hawaii, Boise State, Fresno State, this very solid Nevada team, which really didn't show at all what they were about this year but New Mexico which finished tied for third in the Mountain West dominates this outstanding Nevada offense and they make some history although they fumbled this last snap Willen falls on it and the second New Mexico Bowl is over and it goes to New Mexico shutting out the Wolfpack for the first time since 1980. <laughs> The 329-game streak is over. The 46-year bowl winless streak is over for the Lobos. And their celebration is already underway here in Albuquerque. We thank the New Mexico Board of Tourism for all their help. Coming up next year on ESPN, the Pioneer Las Vegas Bowl, UCLA, and BYU. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Rod Gilmore, Dave Ryan, the rest of our ESPN HD crew, Dave Barnett, so long from Albuquerque, now to Reese Davis in the studio.